not conscious conscious not conscious hello have you totally lost it i or believe i never had partially it, sir. lost it i never had are you it. trying to find it i'm looking where sir, you, where, have you found Jesus? I did not supposed to look for him, Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> where are you looking for it? I don't know. Under the mattress? Under the duvet cover. The duvet. <laughs> the duvet. I don't the have duvet. one of those, so I apparently need to find that also. Megzi is like, can we get a duvet? And I'm like, first of all, what is a duvet? And then <laughs> secondly, no. <laughs> yeah, just Amazon. No, Megzi and Dot I. Net has probably, that stuff. It, once again, it goes. It harkens back to Samuel Jackson. Jackson in uh, in Pulp Fiction. I was going to say snakes on a plane. My girlfriend wants a duvet, which means pretty much that I want a duvet. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I like that we start a serious one with jokes. Cheers, bro. Sir Clink, our soda cans together because we're uh, not. No, beer it's Modelo, bro. Yet. Oh, it is Madero. It is. <sighs> oh, that is delicious. So, welcome to uh, Not Conscious, sir. When when he knows. I hope that beginning part was fun. Maybe we'll incorporate that. And just do uh, like next that. podcast, I will be asking the status of said duvet cover. Well, that's at least a week away from this conversation. Oh, now I'm no, sad. No, it's like three weeks away. Because oh, we're, no. we're not going dark, but we just have a couple of days, times off. I have a muy to... poquito vacacion. Importante? A uh, small vacation, sir. Oh, okay. Plus, but we'll get together. We'll, we'll still, still have more of these for people. So, so uh, not conscious, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Hola. Boys and germs. All the peoples. W- what are we talking about, bro? Today we're talking about uh, the start of the term public relations. Okay. Or also known as the century of self. Yeah, so there was a BBC documentary titled "The Century" or "Century of the Self." I think it's. I believe you are correct for the first time. Specific term. I'm usually wrong. I've listened back to our conversations and been like, "Wrong, wrong, wrong." <laughs> do we need like, a wrong? I want to play the, Do we need a wrong button? It's probably the dive horn. Is it a, the? Is it the? It's probably the dive it's horn. The it's the eh, submarine. Eh, eh. But uh, yeah, I just I think we just need one of those wrong. No, <laughs> so. You want two weeks? You want two weeks' attention, mister? Oh, my gosh. Um, does Barry Manilow know that you're raiding his wardrobe? Yes. Okay. As long as we know that. Oh, Mandy. So, Century of the Self is a BBC documentary. It's four parts. It's like an hour per part. Yes, but it's very good. It is phenomenal. It speaks about... What's it talk about? How's, how's it kind of get into? Uh, it was released into? in 2002, so it's not HD. It is a little older, and that's I don't mind it because I thought the information was very interesting and it and it was historical so it wasn't yes like current events no not at all but i like the fact that it 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 talked about a gentleman that i had never heard of before so it was completely new information and i i like that because it wasn't something oh i kind of know about this guy but i want to learn more about him it was nothing like that at all i had no idea about this dude or about anything about him or what he did or what he practiced or about the term public relations or where it came from. I I never gave a crap about that before ever, but it was incredibly interesting. I thought, and who is that? That, uh, that's what's interesting to me. But Edward Bernays doesn't even ring a bell to me. I've correct. Don't know that name either. Nor did I, but he's related to someone that we might know the nephew of Sigmund Freud. That's a pretty big name. Yes. But Edward Bernays was born in America. He's an American, but obviously Freud was not. So, but Freud still, was Austrian, Austrian, Jace from Viennese. Yes, from Vienna. Vienna. Correct. Yes, Viennese. I think something like that. Yeah. So Sigmund Freud's nephew. So you're like Edward Bernays, whoever the heck this guy is. But then you're like, oh, Sigmund Freud. Oh, he was into psychoanalysis. You know, he invented psychoanalysis and all these other terms. But this Bernays guy basically developed the American consumption culture as we know it today. Yeah. He founded, he basically took the term propaganda, which had a negative connotation because of the Germans, because of World War I, and he changed the term, and then he took that term and used it to help American companies market their products is the is the basic term the basic 
Reader's Digest version of what happened. And it's fascinating. Yeah, and the change to public relations. Yes. Just the just making the name. It's kind of reminds me of how PTSD has evolved from, you know, shell shock to uh, you know, it's battle fatigue, then shell shock, then, you know, it's just gotten more yeah. or shell shock, battle fatigue, you know, whatever. And Absolutely. It's crazy. Totally how agree. You just change the name and it's the same, it's the same wolf in a different skin, right? Um, cause it is propaganda in its way. Absolutely. Yeah. It, the way I, the way my interpretation of the, of it was that he manipulated the masses. And you can, yeah. you could use the word propaganda or you can use the word, you can use any word to describe that. That was my interpretation Control. of what, yeah, in, in Simple. a way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And we'll, t- cause we're, the, the plan is that we're going to do four of these cause there's four parts that are an hour long and we're going to just dissect each one of them. Right. That's what we're going to talk. I about believe doing. that is the plan. Cool. Because later in it, obviously we've watched, we've all watched all of them at some point, but there's some really interesting stuff that fills these gaps as we. As we do the next Yeah, they one. talk about um, Sigmund Freud's daughter yep, in, a, Anna, in an episode yep. down the road and how things progress. Because this takes starts to take place in the 1920s. Yeah. And then how things progress in the 50s after World War II. And they and how the American government... All the way into the 80s uh, yes. Pol- politics. Yes, in the, the 1980 election with and Reagan. And into Clinton, actually, in the yes, 90s. Even. absolutely. So yeah. it does go up until Clinton's re-election, which is interesting. So yeah, it, it does crazy. span a pretty like large gap of things. So let's get, let's dig into this. How do we want to start? Um, I would figure we, I would start or Do you want to look at your list and you want to start or do you want me to no, go man. with what I got? I love what you got because what you got is so much better than mine, but I've got I, other stuff that'll support and, or I don't know. You, you, your, your research looks pretty thorough there, man. I'm nah, pretty I impressed. Names. I type words, bro. Just words, They're words. Like the, I can spell the many times in a row. That See looks how more than the. So it says 500 words. It's pretty minimum. impressive, man. 499 of them are the. <laughs> <laughs> and one's a. Uh. Uh, the original, the, what I wrote down first was that in 1916, when uh, America was joining World War Two. I'm sorry, World War One, that the American government started what they called a public information office. And Edward Bernays was asked to join that. So I found it interesting that they already wanted to, I don't want to, they didn't use this term, but my perception was they wanted to control information. Yeah. They needed us to feel like tap into that. I mean, that was really the core of it, right? The what basically Bernays took a lot of Freud's thoughts about the human mind. Yes. And used them to at least manipulate us. Yeah. Steer us in a certain direction because we were a very rational, very like, you know, practical society up until this point. Yes. And we went from this, you know, I, why do I need it? Why do I need a new car? Because the other one blew up, not because, oh, it's got a little dust on it and I'd love a, something shiny and new. Because my car is four years old and I really want a new one. Right. No, well, it works fine. It right. only has 35,000 miles on it. Right. Why do you need a new car? Yeah. That's so stupid. They tapped in and that's the thing. Freud was, Freud was kind of a nihilist. He believed that man, you know, man uh, always wanted to do evil and the conscious mind kept us from doing that. Correct. Ultimately. Correct. That's his viewpoint. A lot of people felt the opposite of that. Correct. But he felt humanity was pretty evil. And he stated that before World War One. Yes. Then World War One starts and it's and then it horrific. Was, right. And it was it's like a the, blueprint of what he said. Correct. How bad humanity could be. It's terrifying. With the gas and the, Yes. It was terrifying how accurate his description of the human being was that right it, like, after he stated it all it was like he predicted this was going to happen what's interesting about that is a lot of people predicted a, a war in europe the first one e- the first one and even obviously out of the first one because of the sanctions on, on germany. germany yeah we didn't know that we'd get another guy we didn't know we'd get a second one to be honest probably but right the first one definitely had tensions and it wasn't all burned off after world war one Obviously, because it yeah. fueled World People War II. People were pissed. But, um, you know, we talked about it. Like, it wasn't the shooting of Franz Ferdinand. Like, let's be honest. That was just the reason for the riot. 
it wasn't the it wasn't it was the it was the spark it was the excuse for the riot not the reason for the riot if that makes sense so you're saying there was tensions in europe prior yes all the way up to this and then they're like well this is a great way to get into this fucking war is by using this assassination isn't i guess i didn't know that or if i did i forgot it from high school well, world I history i don't know if it's a known thing but it's the assassination that sparked the war i knew that part right but i'm it's my assumption that it all that event was was just a an excuse to to start it something that had been brewing for a long time so they were going to go to war anyway it's tension seemed that way from what i've been told in sharing stories with you know with other people and historians and whatnot Okay, but, you know, once again, these are theories, right? These aren't. Well, I'm not 100. percent We're not but, historians, right? I'm not. I'm not a historian to extent, but I do know that Europe was very. Their tensions were running high throughout the entire land at that point. Through the continent, basically. Yeah, throughout the entire continent, between all of those countries. Okay, because a lot of change was coming. So. Okay. Anyway, but that's just a small aside. But a public mini th- tangent. It was in line with... I liked it, though. I liked it in it. Mini tangent. (laughs) Um, So, Public Information Office. Yes, sir. What about that? What what did they do? How did did they... I don't know. I think they just manipulate us, right? They got us in a feeling about the war instead of, like, just practically... I'm assuming that, I mean, a lot like World War II, there was probably war bonds... There was probably drives to support the troops. There was, pro- I, I, I would guess that all happened. I don't know that for sure. Again, I'm not a historian, but wouldn't that make sense that that's what happened? Yeah, and it would just be that they were controlling the information we were getting as a people because we obviously don't have, we didn't have Twitter back then. So stop not- it. A hundred years ago. Hey, what's going on over there? Hello, uh, Twitter world. Hola, Twitter world. Uh, did and I'm imagining they probably had. Good day, Twitter world. They didn't have a draft, right? So they tried to get guys to enlist. I wonder, yeah, I didn't, yeah, I guess. That's so, a good point. but a lot of guys went to fight. A lot of guys died. I googled, I beer googled how many guys died, which it's a lot. It's terrible. Um, I don't know if I want to know that number. It's not nearly as much as uh, well, yeah, World War Two, but it's double not. Vietnam. Let's put it that way. Wow, that's bad. In two Con- years, right? And that's this is bad. That's just Americans. This is this is nineteen hundred and eighteen from nineteen sixteen to nineteen eighteen. Right, double so, the Americans from right. Vietnam, and that Vietnam was like ten, 10 years. years, correct? And this is like older technology. Like, yeah, it's not. We don't even have WMDs yet. We don't even have N- the bomb yet. No, we don't have not even close. No, we don't have anything close to that. We've got gas. We've got. Machine guns. We've got bombs. Well, tanks made their introduction yeah. to World War One. Tanks did, yeah. but we still like the airplane was still a, a bi wing, yeah. and we, but bi-wing, we had dirigibles, yeah. right? So yeah. World War One was somewhat was, primitive, yeah, in a primitive, way. and pretty killed a lot of motherfuckers. Oh, it was very it was brutal because of trench warfare. Yeah, it was pretty nasty. So anyway, so this guy starts with the U.S. government gets contracted and gets the United States kind of on the side of getting into the war and doing all that stuff. Once the once they're in the war, yes. Yeah. But he he can he can he uses his uncle's ideas on with of psychoanalysis to start to he understands that I like to use the word the mob, but he understands that he can use these ideas to steer or manipulate or whatever verb yeah. you want to use a large group of people. Yeah. Not one or two, but thousands. Right. That's the point of this. And to that point, he didn't even concern himself with a single individual they even talk no. about. No. He said he, he, he only saw people as a group. Correct. Because he could control a group. He Individual people are, are irrational, or humanity is irrational as a whole. But as a group, you can you can use that irrationality and get a single focus out of it. It's... It was brilliant. That's the, disturbing and it's genius. Scary. It's scary... When it's used for evil, like advertisements and everything else, and getting you into wars, um, <laughs> it'd be great. But see, that that's the problem with it, right? It's like, oh, it's such a great idea if it were used for good. Well, who defines what good is? Well, my good might be, yeah, might not be totally your good. Totally opposite. So it's right. very subjective. So that's a really scary fucking thought. But just that he, he call, he saw us as 
groups of irrational beings. That's how I see us. I see us as chaotic. I don't know how you see us, but. Well, every human can be irrational, correct? I mean, we all do irrational things. We all get upset when somebody, okay, that's not true. Most, some people get upset when somebody cuts us off. We all have cut somebody else off. And that, I mean, stuff like that does happen. How we react to it when that happens is the issue. Yeah, well, one plus one is not always equal to two. In what? Our, in our un, non-irrational mind, or non-rational minds or irrational minds. Right? Uh, I think. I, I'm not terrible at math. No, I'm saying in our irrational minds, one plus one is not always equal okay. to two. Okay, now I got you. Um, so I, once again, I'm not communicating effectively. Do you know what's not rational? My a texts? football referee wearing a mask. That's not rational. My texts are not rational, also, <laughs> apparently. But... Um, to your point, um, I love the looking at, like, we are irrational beings more than we are not. Like, we love to think that we're these thinking, conscious beings. But when it comes down to brass tacks, um, hello, guys, we ran out of toilet paper for, like, a few days. Do you know what also is not rational? Toilet paper. People in California. Oh boy, is this gonna become a bitch fest? This is we're gonna end this right now. The bitch fest uh, ends now. Okay, with your bitch fest, I see how this works. Okay, then I won't tell you. I'm just no. Please tell me. Uh, I want to know. A gender reveal party started a seven thousand acre forest fire. What? Did I stutter? No, I just need you to tell me that again. A gender reveal party. Like a party. A party. In a which fiesta. one's gender is a, revealed. The the pregnant couple. I hope it's just the woman that's pregnant, but uh, sure. Uh, I don't know, bro. You it know, sounds science like this dude shit. was pregnant. I'm assuming was the young hormones. lady or uh, what a woman was. I, I assume a woman was pregnant. I don't know the details of the well, couple. A biological one for sure. Uh, assigned at birth. I don't know, dude. <laughs> okay. There was a gender reveal party that started a 7,000 acre forest fire. Hashtag rationality, bro. <laughs> We're going to do hashtags of everything with bro on the back. Okay. We're going to do them all. We got microbes, bro. Hashtag rationality, bro. Forest fires, bro. Gender reveal parties, bro. So. Yes, bro. This is the question that's on everyone's mind, though. It, what's that? Was it a boy or a girl? I have no idea. <laughs> like, that's fucking what that matters. That's such a Jeselnik joke. Thank you, Anthony. Very true. That's absolutely true. At Anthony Jeselnik. Dude, I... That dude is so funny. That guy's my spirit animal. <laughs> that guy... Not a lion <laughs> or a cactus. It's Anthony Jeselnik. The one who's like, woman diagnosed with multiple sclerosis is literally running for her life, completing 366 marathons in a year. <laughs> The key to her survival, doctors say, was skipping Boston. I mean, how fucking oh, funny is I that? I didn't hear that one. That's, that's good. Oh, that's good, man. <laughs> that's a good one. Some lines are just meant not, not meant to be crossed. Most are. Like the finish line. <laughs> oh, boy. Sorry. Look, if we can't laugh, people... Once again, disclaimer. Hashtag disclaimer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna get get to go too far with these hashtag bros? No, because we're just that we're gonna just jump around like we're really gonna make these. I mean, I think the one, we're gonna have one or two that are gonna stick, but we're still we're still the 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 chimp throwing shit against the wall to see what does stick. We're still. Uh, uh, do you owe me five dollars? No, because that no, because I'm not like being descriptive about it. It's just like more of a term, right? Don't we say throw shit against the wall see what sticks? It's like a term. It's not. It's not really a poop thing. Okay, wrap it up. Um, but, uh, yeah. So disclaimer, we just want to, we're making jokes guys. We're just having fun. Totes. So totes jokes back to, um, the century of the self. Reel it in. So after the war, what happened? Uh, so Mr. Bernays, the young nephew who is 30 of, uh, Dr. Sigmund Freud is asked by the president to go with him to the Paris, Treaty signing. He sees the president, Wilson, Wilson, 
being welcomed into this city of Paris, a hero's welcome. He's the savior of the world. That's the perception of of Edward Bernays that he sees the president being welcomed by all these people. He sees what's going on. And he thinks to himself, if if a mob can be controlled in wartime, can it be controlled in peacetime? And that way he was interviewed several times toward the end of his life and that's what that's what he said, can I do this? Is it possible? He thinks it is. Why why isn't it? light bulb moment absolutely like oh like that's how it that's how societies advance that's how ideas get furthered right just one person asking a question the simplest question if i can make if this is how it is in peacetime in wartime how is it how could i make it work in peacetime or could i make it work and then he moves forward with that and he starts testing it doesn't he yeah he gets back to the u.s after that in 1918 and he in uh, New York City, and he f- founds, starts an organization called the Council on Public Relations. So he said, obviously, I can't use the term propaganda, as I stated a few moments ago. So he relabels it, renames it public relations. That's where the term started. That's where the term came from. So that's, Same wolf, different clothing. Yeah, it's just, it's the same thing that's doing the same job. It's just in a different label. Yeah, it's kind of like, Let's be honest, the term Nazi is not exactly something you can walk around stating anything, any affiliation with, because the, the term itself is bad. That could be bad. Propaganda is the same, had that same connotation. Propaganda was always <laughs> seen in a negative light. Yeah. All right. So this is now the 20s, right? Uh, about 1920, correct. Okay. And then what was this when the, when the campaign for the smoking happened? That is correct, sir. All right. So what happened after that? The, um, or what happened next, obviously um, one of the main, um, tobacco company executives comes to Edward Bernays and says, half of my market doesn't smoke cigarettes. Can you help me? And what half was that? He says, he, Mr. Bernays says, what do you mean? He goes, women don't smoke cigarettes. How do I get them to smoke? And Edward Bernays says, well, let me ask some of my psychoanalysis friends. And yeah, let me work on it. Let me chew and on let it. And let me, let me think about it. But it's, it's going to cost you. He didn't disclose how much it was. And he was asked, why didn't you ask your uncle, Dr. Freud? Well, he was in Vienna, so he couldn't. So he asked uh, a psychoanalysis an analyst in uh, the U.S. And he was advised that the cigarette was a sign of male sexuality or male power. Right, like the phallus. Basically, In a way, they didn't say it directly like that, but that's how we always talk about phallic symbols and things like that. You know, cigar smoking and, you know. Yeah, that's basically what this doctor said. So, which I found comical, and I actually started laughing at the screen when I heard that. Basically, men like penises, is what what the uh, doctor just said. Okay. So okay, great. So Peni? Peni. Uh is that like Prius? I but I different. Still get it. Pri-i. Penises. I think it's penises. I think it's yes. I let's not talk about that. I don't Twitter world. Is it Peni or penises? We'll just call them wieners. Frankfurt. Wieners got banged. So ill regardless, this this doctor says if you want to get women to smoke, you have to my interpretation was reverse the way women look at it make the women feel empowered that wasn't the word they used but that's how i interpret it in today's language of a hundred years later yeah they definitely implied that like yes. it was like don't let this be a symbol of oppression for women let this be a symbol of empowerment exactly right like, exactly so own right. it like own it exactly basically. and it makes how do you make a woman feel just as powerful as a man so they will start smoking as well. How do you do that? And it was the term. It's what they call them that are just like, because remember, this is 1920 now, 20 ish, right? Prohibition just started. Smoking, obviously, they want to get people to smoke more. 
They're going to get women to smoke. Well, the tobacco industry wants to make money. It right. is it is an industry. It is a it is well, it's a, a replacement for for alcohol. If you can't get alcohol, at least you have some kind of drug. Well, they want to make money, right? They want yeah. to sell tobacco, and they want yeah. it's a capitalist society. They want to make money, right? Yeah. So it's very basic. They want to sell more of their product. And the mindset of of the of the American at that point was still this very patriotic you know, what we were, right? Like, it's the whole reason why we went to World War II is to keep democracy, right? To keep freedom and all that. So what was what was the term he came up with? What was the... So, what they call uh, Mr. Bernays, he... He, in my opinion, the dude was damn diabolical. So... Yeah. And it's funny, because I don't... He didn't look ruthless. He just looked very practical. He, he reminds me of some eugenist. Absolutely. Eugenists. Like, I didn't like, think about that. He's like, yeah, it's just the right thing to do. Like, yeah, I'm going to make them, yeah, I'll convince them to think this way. They'll still think it's freedom and it's democracy, but I believe in the whole system. I believe in democracy and, and how, you know, and all that. But, yeah, it'll still be done my way because he could, he could get you to choose. He could get you to decide. It was crazy. Anyway. So, uh, Mr. So, back to the cigarettes. Mr. The uh, Bernays tips off some local reporters that in an upcoming big parade, some young debutantes, some young popular young women were going to be in this parade and they were going to do something outlandish. He puts an ad in the paper. Hey, this is this this is going to happen. So all these reporters turn out. And all these young ladies. Have packs of cigarettes. Strapped to their thighs and they they don't pull them out right away but after part of the parade they pull out the cigarettes and they start smoking and he calls the cigarettes torches of freedom brilliant so he he basically architected this staged it incident what do you want to call that yeah and what do you know the exact year was it 20 something it's okay if it, if we don't have it. The reason I'm asking is 1920 was the right to for women to vote, right? Uh, I can look that up too if you want. So this is coming out of a very strong point of women's empowerment or Absolutely. recognition for women. He just he took advantage of that. Torches of freedom, man. What a great term. Cuz you're coming out of this and you're like, "Yeah, I'm free and I'm, you know, torch uh, cuz torches have power in themselves." Torches like, of freedom, Easter Sunday parade 1929. Okay, there it is. Twenty nine, so so ten I, years after. I was yeah. way off in the years. Well, it was the twenties. It's probably coming out of the prohibition. But and in um, fact, there was a bill in the District of Columbia in nineteen twenty one. Women were not allowed to smoke. That's interesting. How about that? That's wow. That seems really non capitalistic of people. And sexist. Well. Beyond, but I'm saying, how how the hell did sexism outweigh capitalism at that moment? Like, if I were a businessman, I would be like, if I were Philip fucking Morris, I'd be like, um, no. How about they get to sm- make them smoke twice as much, Judge? They live right. longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I wouldn't be making laws against it. Oh, uh, the women's right to vote was 1919. 1919. Okay, so that's where it was. So 1919. Yeah, for the 1920 election, I think. What I meant. That would make sense. That would. I hope that make. I hope the numbers work out. I think they do. So I believe that's torches right. of freedom. And and it's I isn't it ironic? They, did they did the pack cost a buck oh five? Uh probably not. They it's probably cost to, oh five. <laughs> I, I, do you want me to look that up too? No, it's you ironic that we're, we don't have time for that, man. <laughs> we got yeah, we got tons of time. <laughs> it's true. But it's ironic that um torches of freedom and the Statue of Liberty you know, she's got a torch yeah, and she symbolizes and freedom that. Yeah. so that it's just, it's, it's diabolically genius. It's stuck in your head because everybody come to Ellis Island back in 1920s right. and whatnot. So, right. It was like Ellis Island was America. Like, yeah. place, like that's where people came to America from every country from everywhere. It's fucking beautiful. So that there's that emotional connection to, oh, well, you, yeah. do you support freedom? Oh, well, then you should smoke. Right. It reminds me a little bit of today's world, doesn't it? In which regard? If you don't explicitly say that you're for a cause, 
then that you're against somehow it. you're absolutely against it, which is stupid as which shit. Which is the most backwards bullshit, backass, stupid fucking thing ever. Just because I'm not tattooed with a certain slogan or phrase that I'm against a cause for people being better, like that is that's just a ridiculous. That's a ridiculous correlation. You know what I've I've discovered in the past month. What mini tangent check mark that if people state their opinion to me, regardless of what it is, and I say nothing, they assume I agree with them. But right. I find it's just easier and a less waste of energy and emotion just to shut the hell up. I think that's the best approach because regardless of whether we agree or not, the person making the claim has their right to express that. They claim, are absolutely, and I totally right? agree with that. And I think that's what you're taking it from. You're like, yeah, tell me what you want. Just cause I, but just cause I don't, I don't disagree with you. Doesn't mean I agree with you. I choose not to respond. Right. Yeah. And you, thank you for sharing your time. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And you, okay. You think that everyone with purple skin needs green hair. Cool. That's what you think. I also cool. agree with that, by the way. Uh, that, well, that's great. That's and my libertarian platform. I'm too. glad that when che Senator checkmark wins in 2027, that's what his platform is going to be. Purple skin, green motherfucking hair. <laughs> purple skin, a, green a vote motherfucking for check hair. Mark is a vote for purple people with green hair. Purple Ye people eaters with green yes. hairs, please. <laughs> but so, but no, a lot of people they 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 give me their opinion. Yes, and then I don't say anything. Right, and they most people don't ask what I think, and that's totally fine. I don't. Totally that's fine. not my point. My point is, it's cool. I don't mind listening to anything you have to say. Cool. But I don't feel it's worth my time or effort to rebuttal that I don't agree with you. Right. Because I don't want to get into it. I, there, I just don't. I just don't. There is the other side, though. Yeah, well, that's the whole point is, like, we're allowed to feel the way we feel about things, guys. And we're allowed to share them. Absolutely. So, boom. That's cool. Done. Totally cool Or with not that. share them. Or not. It's... Look, it's choice, but you know that's with the freedom of expression. You know that's that's kind of the price you pay. Is you probably hear more than you want to, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. And what's massively ironic that uh, my no nothing in the Alanis Morissette song, nothing at okay, all. That's that, what I thought. The, my friends that listen to this were going to go, dude, you actually shut the hell up and didn't say anything to someone. They'd be like, get out of here. Yeah, because you're not comfortable with those fucking jacknuts who come up to you and just offer opinions. Jacknuts! I don't even know what a jacknut is. But it's I just a great term. It. Hashtag jacknuts, bro. Jacknuts, bro. Um, so to that to that end... Torches of Freedom, bro. We just went tangent city, didn't we? Well, no. You can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, totally. But there is that other side. If you don't actually come in screaming the same vehement that they are... That you're against them also. People make that assumption. So you Correct. can't fucking win. Cor yes. It's like, I, like I mentioned, I made a post on Facebook <laughs> changing my mind about something, but changing my mind was not enough. It was so wrong of me to have the initial opinion in the first place. Like, okay. I just don't understand that. But well, okay, dude, people cool. are dumb sometimes. Are, yeah. We're all dumb. That's what Bernays knew. People were stupid. I mean, yeah, and his daughter said it. Of people, actually, yeah, I have his notes his on daughter that as was well. interviewed, and his daughter said that he thought everyone was stupid, and Renee he felt that people were really, really stupid. Boom. And right, he used that. She said he used that word a lot to refer to people, including her and her siblings. So obviously, she was emotionally damaged, and that's horrible. And. and he he wasn't. It, it appears he wasn't a nice person. What's really interesting is, but good and evil, good and bad are very diff, bad are very challenging terms because, in his mind and in many minds, he his connection f to democracy and capitalism, his connection of the two, is what makes America America. Without that, we are no longer America. It is different. So he had to manipulate people to think in those terms that he wanted you to, to get the control he got to keep America the way it was. Correct. But by doing so, we're not free motherfuckers. We are just slaves of the system too. In a, in a way you are correct. 
And that's what's really scary about that. And what I love about Century Self, and we're going to get into the other parts, is how it does change over the years. Like, yes, um, you know, we'll, we'll get into that. But but this Bernays guy was just a fucking genius. Sadly, yes. Um, but was it was it good? I mean, without without him, America doesn't become what it does. It doesn't become a superpower, a manufacturing superpower, um, a global. Uh, beacon for everyone to come to for well for, for 50 or 100 years for but, science and math and yeah but like Woodrow everything. wilson started the league of nations and democracy around the world so he already was he wanted america to be that beacon without the public relations industry that edward bernays was building anyway but it was already started in the 20s League of Nations wasn't until after was war. Was 1918. No. Oh, League of Nations with Wilson. Okay. Was the was the was, fa- 18, was right. the starting was the foundation that, for the United Nations. Correct, but didn't that dissolve then that dissolve at some point? Yeah, it turned into the United Nations. It became the United so Nations. So he the, Woodrow the Wilson started America being that beacon of hope and the right. the, the every country needs to be democra- d- democracy. Right. You know, that's what that was the foundation of everything that we're trying to do now. But we had to show the growth. We had to show the the yes. Manufacturing. Yes. And without the consumering, without the consumer, the manufacturing doesn't happen, or the stuff that's manufactured just yeah. sitting collecting dust. Yeah, because so it, had, yeah. it was a very sensitive system. Like yeah, that. and if you don't have the consumers spending money to produce sales tax that promotes more jobs to promote income tax, you're, you're, you're I see. Like, no, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It's a, there's all kinds of there's all kinds of balls rolling down the hill collecting more snow that if they don't do that there's no there's no gross national product right yeah i mean the 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 problem is without capitalism the democracy part crumbles without democracy the capitalism part crumbles they, he joined them together so they became kind of an intricate de- balance i don't necessarily know? agree that you can't have democracy without capitalism no, he linked them i understand that i'm saying the way the system was set up was it had it was on the backs of the consumer? Yes, because that it was, was the problem but coming again, out of World War One. I. I don't. I think that you can still have a. I don't disagree democracy with your without. Right. He. But what I'm saying is the system was created the way he linked it. Yes, understood. So then that system would collapse if it changed. So it was built on that premise, starting of that in, ni- in the 20s. Right. It, it, that's what he did. He directly connected democracy. And capitalism. And that's that was kind of running throughout, rampant throughout the entire, you know, part. Torches of Freedom, right? To our point. Yes. We were saying. So yes. anyway, so we get out of that. Torches of Freedom was like his first real campaign, right? That kind of gave well, gave him notoriety. Public, not governmental. Right. Not government, you know, like with World War Two. I'm sorry, World War One, et cetera. Right. So yes, it was. So then what um Ricky Schroeder's thumb. <laughs> Welcome. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey, <laughs> boo. <laughs> That's good, man. What do you think? Nice. Good point. <laughs> good point, Ricky Schroeder. I forgot thumb. about the thumb. I know. I brought I need up. to buy you a thumb. We're only huh? doing one. I need to get you a thumb to put up there with Baphomet. Baphomet and the thumb. And I meant to bring you another trophy, but I forgot it. I owe you a Greedo. I owe you. After yesterday's episode that was released, I was going to bring you my special Agent Orange from Trading spa- Trading Places. Oh, yeah, It's a bobblehead of Eddie Murphy on the little cart with no legs. <laughs> I'll have to, oh, I forgot it. I'm sorry. I love it. I actually have something for you downstairs. Stop it. A Greedo? Mm-hmm. And it's not in a bedroom. I have a Greedo downstairs, but I also have another similar thing, but you won't ever guess it, so you're not even going to try my friend. Uh, so after is Torches it a of Freedom... sex bot? No. Damn it. I can't afford that for you yet. Damn so I'm still, it, damn I'm, it, damn it's it. still on layaway. Get it? Yeah. Layaway? <laughs> <laughs> Just came up with that oh, one. That's freaking good. Was that good. the stupidest dad joke? That's, Welcome to dad jokes, everybody. That's great. Dad jokes, hey, bro. Hey, dad, where's my sex bot? Um, we can't get her home yet. She's still on layaway. <laughs> so fantastic. Banana phone. Oh, that's so great. All right. So basically the 1929 Torches of Freedom, he figured out how you can tie products to the emotional state, the emotional psyche of the consumer, of the American. Yeah. That's basically what he figured out. 
Yeah. And so by doing it in a group, he did the mom mentality. He always did. Correct. He always saw people as groups. Yes. He never saw them as, like we said earlier, he never saw them as individuals. Yes. The masses. Suffer the masses. Ba, ba, ba. Who's that? That is f- uh, Flotsam and Jessam. Flits, flitsam and Flopsam. Is it Flip? J- is it Flitsam and Flopsam? Or is I it think flotsam it's Flotsam and, and Jetsam. It's such a good song. Yeah. They didn't is make it. Is it Jet Ski and uh, Jet Ski and, and Bob. Water? You know who I think <laughs> it is? Bob. I is, think it's Camel Toe and the Man. Is that Neil? <laughs> is that Neil and Bob, or is that what you do? Hey, hey. Camel Toe and the Man. That one needs to come back sometime. Welcome back to Camel Toe and the Man. Danny had a nice thing to say. He's like, "You guys have the radio voices for it." And we're like, "Thank you very much." <laughs> back to you, Bob. All right. So we're back on uh, off of tangents. Yes. So uh, welcome back after to- World War One ended, there was a concern with the industries in america that they were because of the roaring 20s there was a boom there was too much production yeah, over manufacturing correct so they were concerned that there was going to be too many products in surplus and that was going to be an issue so because the middle class the the, the rich always always bought too much they had too many of everything right but the middle class always bought only what they needed whether it's Clothes or cars or food, they just bought exactly what they needed. And the advertising of the day was they, the companies advertised the functionality of the product. Oh, this car does this. This soap does that. This is what you need. It's reliable. It will last a long time. It will do the job that you need it to do. You need one. Your last one stopped. We can no longer fix it. So you need to get a new one. Basic stuff. Versus... Versus how Edward Bernays looked at it and he wanted to solve that problem. Hey, people are coming out of the war. They're making more money. We have all this extra surplus of everything because the manufacturing could make more. How do we shift everything from a needs based culture to a wants based culture? The quote was, how do we shift from needs to desired? Yeah. Did I get that right? Yeah, as Paul Mazur of Lehman Brothers said, we need to shift America from a needs to a desires culture. And that was that was the way you shifted was emotionally. Yeah, absolutely. Because obviously when you're playing logically, yes, I'm getting a new car because mine is irreparable or it costs it's not practical to keep it for whatever reason. And I need a new one. Not Oh, well, this one has, like I said, this one's got a little dirt on it, and the newest model just came out. It's so shiny and new and beautiful. I want it. I want something else versus the need. I mean, it's a huge, and it, it's know, a huge shift. I'm just as to blame, though, too, man. Like We're part of the system, I mean, bro. I, my last we, car, it was six years old. It had 56,000 miles on it. I mean, it ran great, but I needed new tires, new brakes, and a new clutch. And I but traded that's a little it in. practical. Yeah, but that's a semi practical because of the amount of cost. Of yeah, that. it was three thousand dollars. Right. So do I pay three grand to fix all those things? Or do I and there's no warranty on it? Right. Or do I get something new that doesn't have all those problems? Yeah. Because really that good. is that is that is in the that is in the world that we live in now. Yeah, yeah I don't have a car payment now, but I got I'm gonna pay three grand. To fix it all, to not have a car payment, or do I get something else that has a car payment and that right. don't have that problem? Right. So it's just the kind of person that you are too. Yeah, the, oh, it definitely comes into that because that comes in later is how they they we kind of get put into labels and groups. Remember in Century Self later they talk about different groups that you get put into. Yes, yes, so yes, yes. I forgot we'll, about we'll that. We'll get into that, but yeah, but that is part of the psychology. Right. We're just talking about kind of the history of how this. All came, but going from a needs based to a wants based is huge. Right, absolutely. You know? And it's funny because um, Edward Bernays, he started, he basically started merchandising, which reminded me of stupid space balls. I mean, the, the great needs, desires question, the, I think the best analogy in today's world would be the cell phone. Because every six months, there's a new model out. Yeah. From the same company, right? The 11 becomes a 12, the 12 becomes a 13, the 10 becomes a 20, the 20 becomes a 30, whatever. Right. And that's, 
every six months. And how many times you, I need a new phone. You need a new fucking phone need. Those things are like a thousand bucks. I say the same thing though. I I, I said it a couple days ago. I don't disagree. I'm in the same boat. I've got an S 10 plus and I'm like, I've still got another year and a half on this thing. Why? Mine's three years old and it's starting to exhibit little signs of of the battery life becoming an issue. And every once in a while it gets a little weird, but nothing, nothing's deal breaking. But three years is great. I'm talking about like, for me, it's always that 24 month thing to pay off, you know, it's 0% interest to pay off the phone. Right. So it's like 30 bucks a month for 24 months. Right. And then at month 24, I don't have a payment. But I like, want to get a new you phone. You want a new phone. So that's what I'm talking so about. So that's emotional. It's all emotional, man. Because that my phone would last another two, at least two years. I would love a new phone. Yeah. But there's nothing Let's wrong see. with mine. With mine, same thing for me. The cars, I'm more of the practical. I'm like, you know what? I like the car. I just drive it till it's till it's done. But that's me, right? It's we all we all look at things differently. Absolutely. It's so, and and we are so different. But going from needs to wants, I think cell phones are a good example. Anything that has that recurring kind of thing. Yes. We're just technology, cell phones, laptops, you know, any kind of computers nowadays just is crazy how quickly something new comes out. And how quickly we want it. Yeah. We just want we it. We always so want it. It's really, it's kind of sad. Yeah. And, and like, I'm sure these cell companies are four or five models already ahead. Of course. But I'm like, well, why aren't we getting that one now? <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's like the technology is there for the fifth, like fifth model down. And they're building it, but we can't get it now. Why can't we get that now? Darn it. Because they got to trickle it out so they can keep us on the tee. Well, is that because of stock prices? Well, it stretches out, right? It caught, well, it's cheaper to have older technology obviously come out to manufacture it, but they're rolling it out in line because they're going to keep us on because they're going to have that model down the road for us to buy later. We're on the morphine drip, bro. Give me that button. I don't know, dude, I'm on a three-year-old drip. I've got a Bernays sauce drip. I got like an, an, an Advil Edward drip. Bernays sauce drip. <laughs> uh, so, Ill, Ill regardless. Ill regardless of that uh, Mr. Bernays basically started merchandising, and he was hired by the department stores that sprang up in the 1920s, uh, how they put models in the windows that whole displays in the windows thing started in the twenties with real people, not mannequins. Um, he was hired by William Randolph Hearst who owned a bunch of women's magazines. And in the magazines, he put advertising in there that looked like they weren't advertising. It would showed scarves and dresses and shoes and purses and all the same things. Nothing's really changed a whole lot. I'm sure the magazine's a lot thicker now, but that's about it. Um, there was product placements in movies. Or digital. Digital, yeah. I don't know. Um, Online. He put movie stars in pieces of jewelry that he, were owned by companies that he represented. So it was like... He did cross-promotion. So, yeah, he, William Randolph Hearst was paying him because of a magazine that he owned. He put stars in jewelry because the jewelry companies were paying him and then the department stores were paying him. Like he was on the take from every angle. This and guy's awesome. and it was working because he all these other all these companies were making money because of the way he was doing things. It's crazy. He was smart. Disgustingly so. Yeah. Uh, and finally, on and that point, the whole cross promotion thing's amazing. Just having celebrities wearing the clothes, right? I mean, look how it's done nowadays, right? You oh, have yeah. to have Kardashian's lip gloss. Don't ever say that word again. Gloss. Unless we're doing a Star Trek episode. Lip or gloss? Those are both allowed. Okay. And glitter is also allowed. I didn't say glitter. Oh, sorry. Is that just for future? When are we going to Jaguars? So anyway, the last point on that is... <laughs> as soon as they stop wearing masks, bro. Yes, over stupid their, masks. Over there. Ooh-ha! Ooh-ha! <laughs> the last point on that is um, <laughs> that celebrities were paid it to sell merchandise, clothing, etc., telling people that they needed to express themselves. And those were the words they used. And I thought that was so funny that that's a Madonna song. Yeah. So from 19, from the twenties until whenever the Madonna song came out, nothing's changed. 
No, but it has gone through like its ups oh, and course. downs of the, the individuality flows, yeah. to the to the to the utilitarian, right? To the group, back to the individual. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's gone back and forth over time, but the it's the same hits. The hits just keep on coming, right? It's always a recurring theme. It's yes. not one that goes away. Yes. We will become individuals and then we will become a group of something and then we'll be, we will have, we will embrace our individuality. Well, don't we always want to be identified in a group? I mean, isn't that where the, the tribalism that we've talked about many times before? Well, yes, but we also want to be free individual people, right? We also yeah. want to be 330 million individual, like this whole identity thing, identity politic type thing. Yeah. It's like I am an XYZ, blah, 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 blah. I'm the only one. I'm so unique that I'm me that I don't fit in a group. What about me? But you also want to be part of a group. Yeah. It's really weird, isn't it? Because the evolution weird. is the social part. So it it feels like a push pull. Feels like a fight. Yeah. Between I you know, being an individual and being in a tribe. Yeah. The 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 challenge with being so individual in a group is in my opinion, the individualities take over and the, and the tribe dissipates because if your tribe is based on individuality, how do you get together on the same page? There is no tribe. It, yeah. It almost, it kind of almost seems counterintuitive, right? Or it's absolutely, it's it totally oxymoronic. I would feel like it wouldn't last. It wouldn't be a lasting thing. They would we're we'd all kill that. each other. That's going to happen. You'll see. That's not, I don't want to talk about that. No, that's, that's all I'm saying. I'm not going any further than that. <laughs> so I've got hollandaise on my, on my eggs. Hell yeah. No, it's a Bernays. Oh. It's Bernays. Which one, which one is Bernays sauce? I don't know. Is it on steak? Uh, is that, that's not with the mushrooms, right? I hope not. Do you want to? Because I can't eat that. Thing. That's, the fungus is gross. The fungi. Fungus I'm fungi, and fungus. but I don't eat no fungi. Fungus is wrong, bro. So... Back to back Order. to Ed B, Eddie B. That is all for the merchandising section, sir. Do right. you have anything to add to that? No, I think we got that doom. covered, man. Okay. So basically what he did, he got our emotions involved. So yes. we'd want things. Because needing them was no longer enough to for companies to grow the way they wanted to grow. Because well, let's be honest, we're all greedy. They wanted to be bigger. We can talk about America all we want. And I think Bernays saw, he believed in America the way he he formed it for sure, but he also formed it. So it's kind of his, it was his animal. His Yes. His mold. Yes. So, but it's interesting. All right. So what's next on the agenda, sir? Next on the agenda was uh president Coolidge. That boring fuck. That dull dude. Oh, uh, sorry. Why do, why do I have to be the one cursing? Fuck it. I don't know. Why can't you call him a boring fuck? He's a boring fuck. Okay, thank you. I mean, I only met him this that one time. in. Christopher calls Coolidge a boring fuck. Uh, I only met him that Film one time. 11. And he he he, yeah, he was kind of dull. During a seance? He's he, pretty cool. Yeah, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I know. It was just nice to meet a president. It was really kind of cool. Yeah, just that one time. Yeah, just the tip. So he was hired, uh, Mr. Bernays was hired by President Coolidge to try to change his image because he was uh, across the country because he was viewed as a dull president. This is so interesting to me. This is one of it's so stupid. It's so, so stupid. It's so simple yet genius. It's so dumb. So what happened? I'm sorry. So I just just thought this was so smart. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So Mr. Bernays reaches out to many movie stars. 34 movie stars went to the White House in 1924. That is a lot. It is a boatload. 1924? 1924. There were 30 there were more than 34 movie stars I think total? there were 37. Okay. 37. <laughs> I didn't even that was a Freudian did, did they slip. They have to hang did out for it? 17 days. Did you get it for yeah, slip? Yeah, that was great. <laughs> I love you, man. Is that is that why you have so testing stupid. with your mother? Oh god. Freudian, that was fucking funny, man. That was good. <laughs> so, 34. 34 movie stars show up at the White House and they have a lovely time. So, the, 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 they all meet the president and Mr. Bernays is there. He introduces each movie star to the president and they have a nice time. And, uh, they, they, there's a bunch of pictures taken inside and outside the White House and it's on every newspaper in the country. And it, the commentary was that the president, actually may have laughed and actually may have had a good time but it changed the pictures that was hilarious right 
the writer who was like, he may have enjoyed himself or some, whatever the fuck he was. Something to that effect. He may that, have had a chuckle. Right. That he was so dull, he may have actually laughed. Uh, so yeah. it's just <laughs> the entire perception of the president changed because of a few hours at the White House with movie stars. Yeah. I wonder if he spread them out or if he had them like three a day for like a couple of weeks. I thought it was one evening. I, I and I'm not. Oh, okay. You could have had them all over at one, like in a gala. Yeah, uh, that's that how was, I. That, oh, that's right. Because he did talk about the evening. Yeah, so it makes sense. That's probably what it was. I didn't pay that. I must have lost it. Whether it was just like one evening, but it sounds like that. I what believe that's made. what it was. Yeah, it sounded like a gala of some sort, right? Because he had a good time at this. Appeared to have a pleasant time at this affair. It's again diabolically genius. And simple, like oh yeah, oh what if? Wait a minute, we need we need this other entity to be popular. Why not mingle them with popular people? That's that's like the association of the two. Yes, and that's the first time that popular culture mixed with politics was nineteen twenty four, and it's been shittier and shittier every year since. <laughs> it's been down the pooper to the point where poli- where celebrities are trying to be politicians. Even the even the apprentice ones, God's help us, and even some astronauts All who, who want to punch out people who want to swear on the Bible. I'll Boom! Knock you up! I Tell knock you up! My Tell name Buzz. I knock you up. That was a that fantastic. Was, was that a horrible Buzz, Buzz Aldrin right impression? Year, Aldrin impression it was great, but it's not as good as my other. No, one. don't do it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. I'm going to tease with that one oh, all day. Wretched. Ricardo. You mean Dick Dreyfe? <laughs> <laughs> Look, Dick. I'm not a crook. All right, so yes, we uh, so many dicks. Politics and and popularity, right now we're yeah. celebrities, and ever since celebrity endorsements for politicians, right? You, they take sides. It's disgusting. It, Just because you have a a pop hit, and now yeah. we have to listen to you because you I want somebody have, to win. Yeah, you don't know anything. You're an I'm, idiot. The, the downside to that, once again, though, is freedom of expression. Of course, these po- the the challenge with that is they have a of they have a street cred that's an assumed street cred that's not always legitimate. Agreed, because it's assumed on their popularity, not necessarily on merit. Correct, but that doesn't mean that their voice doesn't matter and it doesn't it just means that their voice is louder because they're connected with popularity and we're not. For example, not yet, ladies and gentlemen. If everyone keeps listening, though, like everyone, if 7.7 billion people kept listening to us, I mean, if 7.7 people listen to us, we'd be pretty good. How about 7,000? That's a good start. I like, we're getting there. Well, look, we're over 3,000 downloads in two, in two, in 10 weeks. It took us five weeks to get to 1,000. So that's pretty impressive. I agree. Congratulations. To you also, Tambian. Two tambourines to you also, sir. All of the tambourines. All of the tambourines. 37 tambourines. (laughs) But to that that end, um, you know, doesn't mean their voice doesn't matter. That's what's frustrating for someone like you and I, I think. It does matter. However, should, should 30 million people listening to Taylor Swift, they should listen to her music. Okay, no, they shouldn't. But should they listen to her political viewpoints and take her? We should we be having this conversation? Yeah, we actually should because it's very important because this is about our consciousness, right? Okay. This is about being better people. Yes, it just turns out that her voice is louder and is televised. That's not our fault. No, it's That's not. not her fault. No, I mean, I agree. So, like, should other people listen? That's up to them. But that doesn't mean she can't say it. You know what I mean? I used to be in that same boat was like, why is a celebrity telling me how to vote or something? Right. Or why are they yeah. promoting something? Yeah. Because it feels like a sales pitch in a weird way. I understand. But at the same point, they have they have an opinion about it, too. And they're they're an American citizen. They're allowed to have that opinion. Of course. It just turns out that we have to hear it because they're a known entity. Right. And some people will use that cred as other credibility, right? They'll use the fame as credit as pointing towards credibility that their statement holds more water because it's from someone who's popular. Do you think they're getting paid? Some are, in my opinion. 
I, I don't know, but I would I would assume yes. Let's say a political party goes to Bon Jovi and goes, hey, we know you don't have a political affiliation. I want you to come play our event for a million dollars. Yeah, speak at our event. Hey, vote for Johnny Smith, blah, blah, blah. Speak at our event. Thank you. Now here's yep. living on a prayer. Yeah, totally. A million each. That doesn't Even though he's be. worth a billion or something. Right. They don't. They'll just do speaking engagements, things like that. They'll pad. The other thing too is you could, you know, they do charity work. I mean, I think yes, DiCaprio's obviously a little extreme with the water thing. In yeah, my opinion, but sure, okay. But he probably hasn't. Well, he's got a personal. He has faith in that in that movement. Movement, right? sure, okay. So I don't think he needs to get paid. He's already motivated. Like some some are motivated differently. Of course. But I think, yes, if you didn't have a, an affiliation and they wanted you, yeah, why wouldn't you take money to say, hey, think about voting for this guy? What, what could that hurt? Well, they would... Or a girl, or they a would person, write whatever. They would tell you what to say. Right. You would have to sign a contract. Yeah, and an NDA that, you know, all that, whatever. You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That they didn't tell you what to say, that you feel the, you truly feel what you said and whatnot. Negotiate. Yeah, to cover your butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but you know, it depends. Are, are you is one a sellout? Like, I have told both left and right, and every political party that has texted me to fuck off. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Like, I have a Democrat coming, going, "Hey, do you want to vote for blah blah blah?" And I'm like, uh, "None of your business." And then I've had an NRA motherfucker go, "Hey, do you want to vote the other way?" And I'm like, "None of your business." So I am not swayed as easily, but I'm probably easily manipulated because all you have to do is tell me not to do something. And that's all you, if that's what you, you want me to do something, just tell me not to do it. Pretty much. Oh, reverse cycle. Yeah. Analysis. I'd be, I'd be dope. I it's quadruple reverse. Hey, psychoanalysis. Mark, Smart double. Yes. I dare you not to. Da, 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 da. Oh, I, how dare you tell me not da, to. Da, 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 da. I dare you not to tell me that. <laughs> it, that's pretty much it. Like, <laughs> Don't tell me, don't tell me to be quiet. Don't tell me to do something. I, f personal freedoms are very like. See, so they, these, these people that are texting you need an Edward Bernays to discover that about you. Right. Because there's but, probably a. But this, his was different. I'm not the masses. You're not But either. there's probably a percentage of the population that, that the reverse would like, how dare you? But Fuck not off. the majority of people. We're the contrarians, right? We're a small. We're the conspiracy theorists, the small sect of people that are just different. But in our difference, we are also predictable. Yeah, like I, I, I why you it. listen to heavy metal or got into it in the first place is probably different than how you feel about it now. Your initial may have been just no, a rebellious. It still speaks to my soul, right? But I mean, it just may have been a rebellious thing because it was no. different than other things. I spoke to my soul. I get it. But you understand where I'm coming from. People I understand dress point. goth to be something different, right? Well, yeah. if, you, if you're going to call me different, I'll be different. It's not a criticism. This is how it's humanity is. works, right? This is just how it works. And I'm, I'm, I don't know you. I haven't delved into it. If that's how it is about it, if it was the music all along, then it's the music all along. Oh, absolutely. Some people, it's, it's different. Some people are easily swayed by just, hey, like pointing out that you're different is special. So be different. But they already have a fucking market for that. There's enough of a niche. Niche. And we're going to talk about that in later episodes too because that comes up about the individual as well. But. <laughs> apparently. Um, Somebody's somebody like Steve the, Buscemi the downstairs. Phoenix, uh, Chainsaw Massacre is going to be happening. Are we fire going? Very shortly. Fire go. Yeah, yeah. Just put the leg in this tree, the tree shredder place. I got the night crawlers, Meyer G. Don't you Just know. plain funny looking. Don't you know? Don't, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Super. No, no, no. I got no. I got the serial numbers right here. <laughs> no. All right, William H. So to move along. Yes. <laughs> we fucking. I love our tangents, man. They're just all over the place. Vroom, vroom. Okay. In 1983, so, my yeah. dad drove to Palm Springs with me and my. From where did that come? Stupidest story time ever. Okay, 1983. My my my, fam my mom and dad and I drove to Palm Springs when I was a wee lad to look at a timeshare presentation, so that my dad could get a chainsaw. 
<laughs> That's the only reason <laughs> that we went there. Uh, I've done it for rooms. And, I've never uh, done it for a chainsaw. And he fucking bought it. He ended up buying he it? He bought the timeshare. And he got the free chainsaw, too? And he got the chainsaw. Oh, well, you know, it's a huge, huge kickback. Way to go, Cesar. <laughs> How long did the chainsaw last? Like, uh, I don't three know. Three months? Before? I don't know, dude. Snap. He probably it's probably still in someone's garage somewhere. It's somewhere <laughs> Some hoarder still has it. It's My dad man. went to a hoarding meeting and he gave it to one hoarder who gave it to a different hoarder, and there you go. And and the connection is that Edward Bernays came up with the timeshare. <laughs> no, the the chainsaw sound outside the window. Oh, so I know. I was, Ill regardless, I was trying to tie it back in nineteen twenty seven. Wow. So wait, what did we just come out of? Nineteen twenty six. Yeah, 24. I'm just kidding. After President Coolidge. Oh, was yeah, dull. Coolidge was cool now. Right, with yes, 34 people. he was super 37. cool. 37. Whoa. Uh, Mr. Bernays convinced the middle class that they should also buy stock in national companies like the rich do. He did this by convincing them to borrow money from banks that were paying him. So these people bought money, uh, bought borrowed money. They bought stock, which two years later they lost in the stock market crash. Right, because they over they artificially inflated the market. How ironic is that? Right, and they lost all the money to the people from whom they borrowed it, who drill, told them to do it in the first place. Yeah, and then I would it's imagine a perfect circle. Isn't I it? imagine that they most likely defaulted on those loans too. I, that, that was yeah. not mentioned. Well, the 30s are coming. Well, right. So we know what happens in the 30s. So every so those unless well, we know what happens in unless there was some 30. people that got out of the market like hey we just made a thousand dollars let's get out you know what I mean like in 1928 did you make no of course you didn't because there was the belief in that time that a, a crash was not possible. Uh, greed is good. Boom. So thank you, what, Wall Street. What American human being? What animal? with a conscious, like a human being is going to be like, Oh, I just made a thousand dollars in a week. Yeah. Let me pull that out because I can't make 10 in two weeks. I did. I, uh, Chris, I got out. Yeah. You're not a human. Remember we've I'm talked not human? about this. You have human. Do you, do you know what your blood type is? Uh, I do. You want me to look it up in my phone? <laughs> if you can, while we're talking about it this. is in my, the same okay. notepad that I'm reading my notes from. I do have my blood type in here. I do. Cause like I'm that. a psycho Virgo. Psycho bro. Virgo. Virgos, bro. Psycho. Um, so we were talking about, yeah. So he, he worked for the bank, right? Bernays represented the bank. The banks and paid at, him. Yes. Right. The banks paid him and he got Coolidge to basically say, borrow money from my, from my employers. Yes. To artificially inflate, obviously, the stock market crash, they lose it all. And he walks away with whatever amount of money because he's a manipulative dude. But he gets it, right? It's crazy. So, um. Okay, maybe I don't have it. Oh, bam, there it is. Oh, Ricky Thumb Schroeder. Ricky Thumb Schroeder. God damn it. I am B positive. You're positive. I thought you were. What is that? Bro. Why? Why did you ask? What does that even mean? Rh negative, my friend. We'll talk about it offline. I mean, we can tangent it now, but it's probably its own podcast. Do we want to? We'll talk about it with UFO connections and all these. Okay, other I don't. Things. I don't even know what you're talking about. So basically, there's two. There's multiple blood types, but then there's also a positive and negative. Yes. Portion, right? Yes. So you can be A positive, A negative, whatever. Yeah. AB type positive, O negative. O negative. O great positive. metal band. Yeah. Type yes, great metal band. So you can have that. Now, only fifteen percent of the population in the of the world, humans, yeah, have what's called Rh negative blood. Okay, so that's blank blah, blah negative AB negative O negative negative blah, blah. blood negative blood. What that means is it's missing the rhesus monkey gene. The rhesus monkey is the direct ascendant of humans. Every, allegedly, every human being must have rhesus blood. Uh, this rhesus gene in it. Okay. But why do 15% of people not have it? What's also interesting is I've looked up numbers and studies, but 60% of alien people claim to have been abducted by aliens are people with, with RH negative blood. So 15% of the world's population accounts for 60% of the alleged alien abductions. 
So they, there is a thought out there, I'm not saying I subscribe to it or not. Like we said before, just because I entertain the thought. You're reporting the information. Right. I, we are able to entertain a thought without leading to fucking hitch our wagons to it, friends. Understood. Um, the thought is that the RH negative blood is the alien blood that some other species had gotten into humanity. So some people have negative blood. I don't know my blood Got, type. We've gotten into humanity. Well, because like, almost like impreg- the genetic splicing. Impregnated us? Not impregnated. Like, gen- what do you gene, mean? Like- gene manipulation, like CRISPR. CRISPR for them. So like. Like, remember the twins in China? The twins in China? Where they took out the HIV gene or whatever and it made them smarter or they had better memory. Remember the tw- we talked about that? No. Yeah. We'll talk about that. But basically, not having the like racist D- gene. Like DNA hybrid? Yes. Like human alien Correct. DNA manipulation. Yes. I, I can't think of the right words. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, yeah, making DNA or basically like a, a gene splicer editor kind of thing. Like there's for Word document. That's what CRISPR is. So in China, they did that already. A doctor took twins and took out a certain gene that was associated with the HIV, with HIV. Without that gene, HIV cannot happen in the body. But there was a side effect. That side effect was increased memory and intelligence. Hello. Wow. And the, I never showed you that, that article. We're, we, let's I do forgot a podcast what CRISPR even meant, dude. Let's do a podcast wow. on that one because oh. that's that, that's, well, that one definitely interests you just from the wow. No, that was because my leg just popped. Oh, when that, I, that hurt. That was a different wow? Yeah, sorry. Oh, that was an owl. Yes, correct. No, woo. Woo. <laughs> You're missing the woo, sir. Ow. <laughs> wow? No. Ow. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so yeah, I did forgot, but that's pretty impressive. So this is the Rh negative blood. There's an, there's a school of thought, or whatever. I don't know what the correct term. Sure, it's not even a hypothesis. School of really, thought is is you, accurate, right? You can't really test it, so it's not really scientific, unfortunately, because you can't test it. That that Rh negative are human hybrids, people with Rh negative blood, because the Reese's gene should be in every human Homo sapiens blood, allegedly, because we're part of that then again it could just been a mutation but it sounds sounds weird that 60 you know, percent of abductions are 15 percent of the people do you know what i have gout nope <laughs> i have the reese's peanut butter cup gene oh. you know what i have kellogg's crispix oh yes it's crispy times two boom they're delicious corn and rice sir Moving along. Back to tangents. Welcome back to tangents. Four hours. I'm very sorry. Also everyone. in the 20s, I had a note here that uh, Dr. Freud released a book in the United States, and the very short Cliff's Notes version of it was that uh, the human subconscious and unconscious cannot be trusted and leads to a mob mentality, which was somewhat of his theory before World War One. And World War One, but World War One that. proved that. Or at least showed that, reflected that. See, just because it happened doesn't mean that that's the only way. I mean, some people didn't war. Anyway. Uh, So now we're in the 30s, or were we? I also noted that after the stock market in 1929, there were um, fights. There was already a, a, a financial crisis in Europe. Inflation was an issue and stuff like that. So in 1929, when the stock market crashed, that did obviously affected Europe and it made Europe even worse. So well, uh, allowed the rise of Hitler, of course. But it also there was a lot of fights in Europe and mobs and stuff like that. So it, it, my point to bring it up is it reminds me of today, or you know, the summer of COVID and the the bullshit that's been going on in this country and also in the UK and other places where there's social unrest and whatever other words you want to use. This situation we're in this year in 2020 during all of this, it does unfortunately remind me of certain revolutions where an outside group was infiltrated, hired, used initially the thought was to make positive change and now it's been hijacked by a group who wants to not rep not have the united states be what it is 
I'm trying to be as vague as I can because I'm not. What revolution would you refer that? Would am I allowed uh, to ask Russian, that question? Yeah, because we even talk. I think they even talked about it. They did mention the yeah like the 19, Russian revolution, yeah. Bolshevik revolution. Look at the Germans. So you're saying the Germans burn fucking but these rational like. I come from a German family. No. Ger- Germans are about as fucking robotic as they can be. I mean, as that is about as Vulcan as one well, can be. Well, next to German. Russian, is there a more? Russian are just sad. Russians are surprisingly emotional. <laughs> they're just sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they're surprisingly emotional. They're, they're, they're tragic. Like, they're sad creatures, but right? That... They write such beautiful music and literature because of their sadness. But it's emotion. It's not cold. They're not. They're not emotion. It, they are very emotional. They're not logical. Okay, so I was incorrect. Well, it, it's my opinion. Okay, this is an no. Opinion. Pardon, no. I'm not. I'm not, not. Please. No. Well, like think about Tolstoy. And yeah, Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky and yeah, yeah. Uh, just all of that, other Russians. Right? Well, Dostoevsky. I mean, the brilliance out of Check these off. out of these <laughs> nuclear whistle, captain, evacuation, captain. Uh, but so Germans. But Germans are just very robotic. They all they did was have fucking rage. Did you see the passion? Like what? I don't know what else to call it. Those mo- those groups of people in the stands just cheering. Mm-hmm. One unity. Blah blah blah. Burning books. Like what rational human rational human being can get carried away into thinking like that? And that was only seventy years ago. Eighty seventy five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Seventy five years ago this year, right? Seventy five. Yeah. 75? Yeah. 75 years ago. 45. Right? Sure. 70 is yes, sir. 2015, and then 5 is 2020. 75 years ago. End of World War II, 45? Right? Yes. Yeah. So that, a mere 75 years ago, and it's happened since, don't it get me really wrong. It really wasn't that long groups. ago. That's not, that is a, that's a one lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. One lifetime. We, the most rational individuals we're doing the most emotional things completely out of their minds. Insane. Who would have allowed what rational people to allow the atrocities done to Jews who, who just felt that way. That's they, they made that they manufactured that passion, that fear. Were they I, scared? Lo- I, so they got, in there's line? a nationalism to it. There's a, I, there's so much of the motherland. Like they tied Germany. Absolutely. They tied, they tied the people to the land. Like, people left America to fight for Germany. Yes. with That had German blood. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they you said think it those was people for the wanted Germany. to go? No. It was a duty. Germans are very duty. dutiful. Okay. But that's their culture, right? So it, it all ties in to how, it, how they manipulated that. But once you get the mob going. Yeah. Once you get a group of people. Yeah. And you reach that tipping point. And that, they, this, they knew that. That's how people get trampled to death on Walmart on Black Friday. God, that's why I don't like, go think there, about bro. that. Think how many people. Like I think it's got. I remember there was one. I think four people died in one incident. Shut up. Where they just funneled into the opening and just the front people got all for a Cabbage Patch Kid. Well, if it was for, it wasn't the eighties, but if it was for that, it's kind of mm. what? Well, is it? Is it it, I'm not going to say it. You're but, saying, was it worth it? Is that what you were thinking, you jerk? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hello to the world. I do not mean that at all. I never had but one. I was making a And joke. I'm okay with that. I don't think, did boy, boys have They them? had them, didn't they? Well, I guess. Doesn't, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry I brought it up. I had a Teddy Ruxpin. I didn't That have told that. us a story. I didn't either. I didn't have cool stuff. Like I had that. his pants. I had an Atari 2600. I didn't even have that. That was, that was the bomb. I wanted one very, very badly. That's that was the bomb. I got into electronics. Didn't have a Nintendo. I got that for breaking my leg. That was worth it. Every fucking second of that. That's what you get for. I got a cast it. for breaking my leg. I got that too, and then I got <laughs> spike bar. I gained seventy pounds in two years. It was a great, great time. <sighs> Steve Buscemi's still out there for <laughs> some <sawing> way. <laughs> what the fuck's going on out there? All right, man? do you, do you? Oh, sorry. Where are we at? I mean, I've got a bunch of Nazi notes. You want to go down that road? Or yeah, let's just finish it. my other. No. Well, there's well, one. There's one note I had about Doctor Freud that uh, he said um, human beings must always 
be controlled. Therefore, they will always be discontented. He thought that, you know, he thought the unconscious and the subconscious was always, there's always going to be anger and rage and there and on the edge of chaos. Therefore, it must be controlled. Therefore, there will always be discontent. Right. But which to me means you can never, as a human, in Dr. Freud's mind, you can never be happy. That's my interpretation of what he said. Right. Basically, yeah. Because, well, the freedom, the freedom to be dark negates the reason to be free. <laughs> That's like, totally fucked. But is that sounds yes. fuck, is that almost paradoxical? The right? Did that make sense after saying that? the f- the freedom to do what you want to be dark and evil? Right? Because that's what humanity is, especially in, his in a mind. mob. In his mind, the freedom to be that way negates the reason to have the freedom because you won't exist without the control. Yes, because you all kill I each other. I think I said it better the first time. I, just, well, I, I can't wait to listen to that again. Are you, are you going to delete the first question? No, no. No, I'm, you're not. I'm, Duh. I'm, I'm doubling down, sir. Boom. Yeah, so basically the freedom to be able to do what we wanted or to do what we want will lead us to be dark and mobby and fucking kill each other so we won't survive. Therefore, we really shouldn't have the freedom. But not having the freedom also makes us sad. And it feeds into it's like a feedback loop that just constantly. Yeah. It's a, it's like, I'm sorry. Didn't you just say paradox? Yeah. There you go. I think so. That's absolutely correct. Hmm. Where Buddha talked about connection being the source of all suffering. Freud thought that, uh, we just were dark suffering fucking beings. Some, I'm really sorry to admit this, but some days I agree with Dr. Freud. I am more nihilist than not. I'm probably 51, 49. It's hard to, I. Hey man, can I ask you a question? Yeah. After this, do you want to go with me and look at a timeshare and get a chainsaw? <laughs> I would love one. <laughs> it sounds like the one outside is malfunctioning. That one is definitely going to blow up any yeah, second. That about to go. <laughs> I, I'm really interested in this chainsaw. Fucking, <laughs> is that like toaster with the bank account back yeah, in the day? Absolutely. The old school. To- Come on down. Look at a timeshare with a fucking chainsaw. I can't believe that chainsaw. idiot brought his fucking checkbook. What a dipshit. Chainsaw. Yes. Who does your mom still have that timeshare? Yeah, she, sell it sadly. She How does. much is it still per month, or can oh, you sell it? Dude, I haven't got a bill in a, like a year, so Maybe I don't know, really know it? what's going on with it. I'm wondering if it's going to like two addresses ago. Mm, um, nah, they hunt you down, bro. Uh, they haven't hunted. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> they haven't hunted. I don't. I don't know what to say, man. Well, yeah. Uh, hello there, timeshare people. Yeah. Please hunt down. Don't. My friends. No. Leave me alone. Yeah, leave him alone. She doesn't have any money. She doesn't. No. Sad. All right, let's. Sorry, let's get off that. No, it's topic. totally good, man. So, so no, but ch- chainsaw for a timeshare is fucking timeshare chainsaw chainsaw timeshare is the name of a band. Chainsaw timeshare. Timeshare chainsaw. It's gotta be timeshare chainsaw. No, the timeshare should never be in any phrase ever. It's horrible. Time traveler, time other stuff. But not timeshare. That's time stupid. Two time it? Two, yes, approved. Excellent. Well, let's continue that with Mr. Okay, so I have a bunch of Nazi notes here. Um, I, I, the, the, the following phrase really hit me that they believe democracy led to chaos and unemployment. And they use that to win the election. Yes, and they actually didn't win the election. Okay. Enlighten me. But I want you to finish that point real quick about no, that, the chaos. That's, and there's a couple other democracy Nazi points, led to but, chaos. Okay. So coming out of World War II, or I'm sorry, one. coming out of World War I, Treaty of Versailles, right? Wasn't yes, that sir. the one? That's correct. In Paris. Germ- Germany was screwed badly, hamstrung. Like they, were, they had their Achilles tendon cut. They had fought, they were hamstrung. They were handcuffed. They couldn't they couldn't fart without like sanctions or some shit. It was bad. <laughs> like it was not good for them. Fart sanctions, bro. Okay, so that's World War One. Remember, now this is twenty. Germany's just suffering for all this time because of all the sanctions after eighteen. Correct. Nineteen eighteen. So, then then the world economy 
right? Because they led. The United States is on the tail end of that. 29, right. Boom. So now for 20 years, they've had absolute shit. So from 1918 to, to 1933. Three. 33 is when, when, when Hitler got elected. 15 years. Of poop. And, it, and once again, I'll correct the election thing specifically. Okay, whatever words you want to it, use. Well, it's unique. It's unique the way Germany does their election system. That's why it's very clear. It's not a straight democracy like ours. Well, right. Right. So, um, so in, for 15 years, Germany, I think, was about 50% unemployment. Jesus. And the United States was 33%. And you saw how it was 25 in America. I thought it was up to 33%. Okay. That's I could, a lot. Regardless, it was like 50% in Germany. Okay. So you know how bad it was here. Yeah. It was worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they had, they had no way out. So this knight in shining armor comes in. That's where he comes in. He only had a percentage of the vote. Now, what happens is you don't vote for the person. Mm -hmm. You vote for a party. Yeah. Now, there's a person that represents that party, like Angela Merkel pre represents her party. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Hitler represented the National Socialist Party. But yeah. They only had a small percentage, not a small percentage. They had a sizable percentage of the total vote, but they didn't have a majority. Right. They bribed other groups or threatened. We're still whatever happened, happened. percent certain. Catholics also handed over us. Portion of theirs, I read by that, the, way. the Vatican. Remember we yep. talked about I read that. that. Yeah, because the, there, there was a group that Hitler got their portion of the vote, and he basically formed a coalition that he was the head of to win to to have the most votes, right? Yeah. To have the influence. So he then became chancellor as the head of this group that he cobbled together by, via threat, via logic, via appealing to via Catholics' own anti Semitism. Sorry for people who actually feel like they're good people, but that was a big part. That's yeah, that I, was a big part of it. Anti-Semitism was still and always a big part. Yeah, it's not very unfortunate, but I know that's true. What's interesting, the emperor, the em, one of the emperor's representatives from Japan visited Hitler, and he was so amazed and moved by how well Hitler had the whole thing running. Like just a lot coming from a Japanese from a, person from a Japanese that's very, person. Goes, that says a lot. And his statement was, "I wish we had a common enemy like the Jews to focus all our hatred towards." Oh my God! Oh, we we don't have that. That's what we're lacking. And what's scary, and once again, welcome to tangents. What's scary is how true that is now. The United States currently feels. Like it's eating itself up from the inside. Yeah, I, I, sad, but... The reason that part of that is, we don't have a Russia anymore. Well, we have Russia. They're, but they're so... In a, they're impotent. We don't see them as an enemy. China's more scary, but we don't even see China as like a military force. We don't even know. Like, we don't even think about them militarily. They just manufacture everything. Well, they're a we, consumer superpower. We are owned by them. Right. Because all our manufacturing goes through them. So they are a superpower. They are going to be the one. They had. They, they already are, on, man. They are on the, well on the way, if not already. Yeah. They're buying scientists. They're buying everything. They have the means to do it. They make all the iPhones, dude. They make everything. They're, they just get it as a people. But they're not free, right? But that's the thing, right? So we were talking about... Um, Germany or having a common enemy. We don't really have a common enemy. So what are we doing? We're infighting right now. Yeah. Right now it's all this infighting. It's stupid. I, that is not what I mean. The causes are real and need change, but the infighting is stupid. The way it's being done is, is stupid. We're not having a civil discourse. It's not right. It's not constructive. It's not, um, we're not know. getting anywhere. Yeah, we need we need change. We need to discuss and see. And sometimes we are like, yeah, we agree to disagree. Some of those answers are going to be agree to disagree. They're just going to be. And how do we move forward? Know. Right. But that's what it's Yeah, all we'll about. table it for now. Let's handle what we can handle and let's be cool and not be assholes yeah. to each other. Don't be a dick, bro. Right, don't yeah. Don't be a dick. That's a t-shirt. Oh, that's a weird fucking. Hashtag don't be a dick and then bro. That's one. Uh microbes. Totes right. microbes. No. All the microbes. All of the microbes. So, anyway. 
Uh, so yeah, so the emperor or the you know Japan saw how Germany used the Jews as the enemy, and look at what that did. Look at that common goal to not the you know the Aryan goal, whatever that goal is, that pure whatever that common goal was. Pick a goal. Yeah, they picked an enemy. That's they horrible. Just Jews, kill them. That's so bad. You know they ki- basically killed. There's only twice as many Jews total in the world as one, as the number that were killed in World War II. It's like 7 million Jews, right? There's only about 15 million Jews to 17 million Jews out there. There's 7.7 billion people. And once again, Jews account for 25% of the Nobel Science Prizes in the in the 1900s. Wow. 20, one of four Jews. They're 0.02% or 0.2% of the population. And they account for 25% of scientific feats. Yeah, they're an enemy because they're envious. And they're not large. That's, that's actually, that helps. They're, they're oddly powerful, yet a small group. It, people, they've tr- I feel like they've been so mistreated for so long. Well, yeah. Since the Egyptians. Because they fucking wrote the Bible. <laughs> it's their own fucking fault. Well, they know that, well, some of them did. I'm just Then kidding. they became Christians. Judaism 2.0, bro. Yeah. Hashtag Judaism 2.0. Okay. So, uh, Bernie. Edward Bernie Bernays. Uh, The other notes I had on the Nazi party was that uh, I thought it was ironic that Joseph Goebbels was called the minister of propaganda. How that they they didn't think the word propaganda was bad. So it Germans looked at things very black and white. Well, and I, I don't mind that. I think it's funny. Uh, funny is not the right word, but it's yeah, it is funny. Um, the word has the connotation of the word has changed so drastically in what's seventy five years is not really that long of a time. If you look at the how long have the humans been on the planet, seventy five years is nothing. But that word has is is so negative now. You know whether it's Russian propaganda or how or whatever whatever connotation you want to use that word, it's bad. It's not a good word. No, in any way. We now have it as a bad thing, but it Correct. may not have been back then. Cor- and right, and we as propaganda didn't like the term, but maybe Germans took to, or maybe I wonder what his actual title is. That's what they said, Minister of Propaganda. But that's a translation into English. Oh, so remember, we're being. Yeah, manip- I'm, not, I'm not saying it isn't. But I didn't look that up. That just popped in my head right now. So we'll have to look that up. Okay. But do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So it might be Minister of Information. Right. But we translated to propaganda because we want them to look bad. Yeah. So we manipulated what we called them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to have to look All up right. what Gerbils was. I see was. what you're saying. I'm not okay. saying he wasn't, though. Okay. Grain of salt. Cool. Bottle of salt. Salt shaker. Yeah. Totally. Dude. Whatever Do it the takes. rump shaker. Oh. Twerk. Okay. Fuck it. Zoom, zoom, zoom. You better work work a girl. Yeah, I want to zoom, zoom, (laughs) zoom and a boom, boom. (laughs) What the shit? I do. Um, That's all I want to do. A couple other notes uh, that they use. (laughs) Don't headbutt the boom mic with your face. Don't hit the boom mic with your face. A couple other (laughs) notes was that they used Freud's theory to motivate the country. You touched on that and um, how they used Freud's theory was that, that. humans are actually bad or the, inherently bad the inherently bad so they use they use his theories to unite the country to the motherland just like you said and to attack those on the outside so they use that anger or that rage or that negative human garbage to attack those on the outside of the country anyone who wasn't part of the mob right yeah that's how mob mentality works man frankenstein Got a bad rep. Very Fucking much so. Torches and pitchforks, bro. Right. Hashtag torches and pitchforks. Right. Uh, the last point was that there was an interview with Joseph Goebbels that he admired the way that uh, President Roosevelt was doing the New Deal and how he was using the government to get business back on track because of the Great Depression. And he liked that a lot. And he thinks that it was the government's job to run businesses. Yeah. Which was a direct opposite of what american businesses thought american businesses like, not capitalism get, get your hands get the government hands out of business business is private what are you doing so it, i thought it was ironic that 
a Nazi, one of the top five Nazi guys was admiring what the United States president was doing in 1932, 1933. And probably advised by Bernays. Entirely possible. I, I mean, I'm not sure about Bernays, that. Bern, no, I don't know. Well, I mean, obviously they... Bernays obviously had influence well, on, they were on using, presidents at some point. He had Coolidge in his pocket. It, several, he yes. Had, right, and, he, and Hoover before that. And Hoover before I'm that. sorry, uh, uh, Wilson. Wilson. Sorry, yeah. Um, it's a very interesting point. What it was was this, though. That's where the shift comes, right? Like, I don't know your personal thoughts. Obviously, by stating this, you're going to put me in a political label because you have to because... If you believe in one thing of a party, all of a sudden you believe the whole thing. Like, Absolutely it's not. the weirdest fucking thing. Stupid. I am, I am, I'm basically, I'm pro choice in the first trimester. I now, if it is 4% of people that are really not guilty that are on death penalty, I am anti death penalty, which I used to be pro. Like, you can't, I am not religious in any way, but I am um, a gun supporter and a, Free speech person. But like, you're a constitutionalist. Right, I am. But I'm saying you paint me those certain certain of those things put me in one camp and certain of those yes. policies put me in another camp. Yes. So I am a I am about as individual as you can get. I can't be labeled You're literally an independent. As as independent as everyone anyone could be because I actually think about each individual topic on its own to stand its merit. I don't think because I believe in pro uh, that I I'm anti death penalty. That I'm pro choice. All of a sudden, I don't. There, the topics are completely not related. Yeah, they don't. They don't correlate. I don't know why they're connected, and I don't know why we conflate them like that. But it's unfortunate. So that all said, um, yeah, th that he saw the government having control. I don't like the government having control. I do believe in capitalism. I don't think we're doing it re correctly because. The original capitalism was any profits should be put right back in the company. Oh, I agree with and you. And yeah. the greed of the greed of the human has not allowed capitalism to actually be actually be executed the way it's intended to be. If it were where the owner got a you know a X amount of the profits, of course they created the company. They get X amount, but not keep skimming off the top, reinvesting anything remaining, not into a fucking addition to their house, not into a hot tub or a pool, but back into the company. And it was more of a tighter circle. Then, then it'd be interesting. I think there was a cool TED talk about that. And we are really going off into tangent. I love this. Uh, <laughs> there was a TED talk about it. Maybe we'll talk about this one where I think 50, 60 years ago, the CEO of the company made eight times what the worker did. And now it's like a thousand to one. Yeah. It's like such a huge gap. Well, is it between those is two it things. the net worth of the president of the company or is it like salary the salary plus commission it's, plus I bonus plus right one stock yeah. options or is once it, you have everything all, all in all the person makes like a a thousand times like a ceo makes like a thousand times what the worker does but it was only an eight or 12 to one back in like the 50s when production was good and things were much more stable so okay. that greed you know it creates that bigger gap so we don't reinvest or we don't whatever. Look, we've lost all manufacturing. Why? Because it's gotten more expensive to do greed. it. greed. Yeah, it got more expensive to do it. Because I want to go on Amazon and I want to buy something inexpensively and I want it on my step the next day. Yeah. Yeah, it's greed. Greed gets us in trouble. And that's that's what, look, that's what, uh, when you talk about uh, you can't disagree with Freud, greed is a huge part of the negative. We are a fucking awful species in a mob we just take i mean we just have that ability and yeah do do eventually do we calm down yeah but in that moment we're unstop unstoppable there's no calming it until it has to naturally cool itself off and that's i Look was how riots happen i was thinking about that very point on the way over here is that is that because Is that because that that base that we ha all have as humans, that's that survival instinct we're all built with because basically we're, we're cave people. We're, we're cave people DNA and we're cave people instincts, but we have cell phones and air conditioning. 
Yeah, we have a medulla oblongata. Correct. So, and we have Taco Bell, but yet you and I were born in the, in the 1970s, not in BC 74. Yeah. So we were raised and born into an environment where we had jets. Yeah. So yet we have the we have the instincts of a caveman of we have survival mechanisms but we haven't been forced to use them right they're atrophying uh, yeah sure i mean there's two parts of it part one is we have the knowledge of cell phones and jets but do we have the wisdom of cell phone and jets right what i mean by that is yes social media exists but are we responsible with it are we using it correctly? Right? Well, that I don't think that's that's a whole other subject. It's I, a whole, I think my well, it's two things. Oh, sorry, go ahead. My point is that if you is our survive, you, you said our our survival instincts are they're waning because of the age that we have been yeah, born we're into, yes. and the age that we have been raised in and the society we have and you know we have a a ceiling fan over us right now it feels nice it's lovely it's yeah with the air conditioning still three out yeah so it's horrible stupid it was a cool 96 yesterday hey dude we had a cold front bro it's fucking frigid (laughs) (laughs) sorry uh i just wonder how much of that how much of Dr. Freud's theory is correct because he's talking about the, you know, stuff buried in the human subconscious, right? Buried, 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 buried that maybe you and I could only access if let's just say when we're anonymous on social media. No, See, that was my no, point. Though. No, 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 that's not my point at all. Let's well, I'm say- saying these people are savage, right? That what I, what I was trying to say about that is, Social media, we don't have the not we don't have the wisdom to use it in a nice yeah, no encouraging shit. way for everybody. We are animals on there. We are literal the most base people. Have you seen some of those comments yes. from strangers? That's my point is that's Freudian, in my opinion. Okay. Because, okay. But I got you. Go ahead and complete your thought. But about, I was just I know I went off on a weird yeah, kind of way okay, to get let's there. Just, in, let's just but, say in a this is a horrible tangent. Let's just no, say beautiful. in a in a fictional world. In, in a world. In a world. One man, tortilla boy. Let's say in a fictional world, in April of 2020, COVID killed half the population. Okay? So it's kind of like the stand, Stephen King, but different. So, and, and let's say you and I were two of the survivors. And let's say the cell what phone... A stupid ta- God. And you guys believe in God? Yeah, idiots. You guys let fucking Woodsy and I fucking survive? <laughs> A fucking pandemic where half the people die and right. you fucking believe in God. And now we're bouncers at Jaguars. What is wrong with you people? So let's just say, but because of that, <laughs> 50%, 50% of the bouncers of Jaguars are dead. So. But the strippers doubled. That was weird. Thank the gods. Odin, Zeus, all of them. <laughs> so anyway, because of that, there's a, r- a massive ripple effect, right? So food production's down. What You know, water, food, and plants start to die. So we're talking about a borderline chaotic year like warfare in the streets civil not civil war but war you're gonna starve to death right so well i mean unless you had enough canned stuff but god okay so would people like you and i would those base things that mr dr freud said are in us come out because we are now thrust into that situation. This is a long ass question. Jesus fuck. Necessity is the mother of all creation or mother of all invention, right? Necessity dictates that. Tub. So when when some company with a smiley face on the side of their truck drops something off next day and we're like, oh my God, this is so warm and fuzzy and feels so good. When we have that, we're soft as fuck, bro. Agreed. I, I, I totally get there's that. There's no problem. When you're one day away from probably starving to death. Or somebody, some group with guns that right. has everything and you don't. Right. What do you, do you, right. is Dr. Freud right? I guess is the question. Well, yeah, because that you're, 
survival is the base need at that point. And that supersedes all. So is this okay? That's so, the subconscious is survival. He right. just, he felt it was dark, and it's true. And you can look at it from two very different ways. When with limited resources, which is what we're probably talking about, correct? When, whenever yes. there's something, it's limited resource, whether it's money, food, clothes, whatever, housing. The, the three things we need to right. survive: Maslow's heart, hi- hierarchy, correct? All Maslow's hierarchy, all those. When when you have that. Those need to be met. When they are not met or when it's limited, you become greedy and you buy eight fucking pallets of toilet paper. I only bought three, so don't get don't be judgy over there, bro. Right. But you understand. And guess what? If I were at the market the day that the run on the TP happened, I probably would have bought five fucking boxes or something, whatever. Like, I probably would have. Why, why wouldn't I? Because unfortunately, even with my enlightened, like, hey, guys, let's not panic. Everyone else is. So what good is my non-panic when everyone else is panicking? You think you would have succumbed to the TP panic? I believe I would. If I were in Costco the day that that was like people started grabbing off the shelf, I would have gotten in there and grabbed as many as I could. It just makes that I think I would have. I just not. And once again, what what it is is the logic doesn't dictate that. However, oh, right. my logic that it's illogical and that everyone else is going to take it then takes over and goes, well, now it's logical to be illogical. I totally understand. So it actually does. It's in itself, once again, another feedback loop. Maybe that's why Freud saw that. Maybe I don't that's know if that's another point. thought of it like that is that it the logic has to go out the window because it, it reached a tipping point for where the number of illogical outnumber logical. So you now no longer have control over logic because it's on the other side of that. You're behind the power curve. Yeah. It's just my thought on that. I don't know. What are your thoughts? I understand your point. And it's a very good point that I, I and I don't, I, I had not thought about if I was in that situation, if I was in Costco the day the TP went nuts, would I, what would I have done? I don't, I don't know. I probably would have, I, I don't, I don't know. Honestly, I probably would have grabbed two full box, like two packages thingies, yeah. of, but, but I definitely would have grabbed it at least two. A- absolutely two. What I may have done, guys, I'm not a fucking saint here. Okay. So don't, I, I might've grabbed five and then say, you know, as the run was happening, we're talking and you just, say oh man this fucking toilet paper thing i would have been like bro you want some I got yeah some. right i would have I obviously like but within my tribe i mean i wouldn't fucking be offering it to my neighbor right off the bat you know right what I mean? so uh, once again what, what's interesting about doing starting this podcast for example is i am a judgy prick i'm a judgy prick megzy will say it all day really not a, not a bit well i I, I take a stand. So when people say I see How things black and white. How is Judgey and taking a stand the same thing? Yeah, because I put a judgment on pretty much everything. What I've what I've started to do is the put myself in their shoe thing. Like, if I sit back and go, God, that run on toilet paper is really fucking stupid. On its face, that was a stupid fucking thing. That was so dumb. It's a true statement. Right. However. Is there anyone that thinks it's not? No. But had I been there and it happened and I got caught up in it. Or was in there or was there while it was going on, would I have allowed myself to be caught up in it? And that's the difference because I can't answer that unless it's too hypothetical for me. I'd love to think that'd be like, no, one's enough for me. But it was like, oh, fuck, everybody's gone. Ah. I would have been like, shit, I'll grab as many as oh, I can get my hand on four of them. Okay. But I'll, did I'll you four. not watch the news at all or read anything about the symptoms of COVID? intestinal stuff and diarrhea, uh, which I hate the D word is, was not, it, it actually was it, 40, not until later. Correct. 40, but it turned out to be 48.1%. It was not. So in the, in the, in the TP. Yeah. The TP issues, era. Right. The TP era. 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 <laughs> there was not, era. it was all respiratory. Well, let's be honest. The no, run on the lie. toilet, the, the run on the toilet paper made sense in its illogic. No, it did not. In the beginning, everyone, this is the fear. 
that everything was. I wish sh- you guys could see the look I'm giving them right now because this, this is bullshit. Go ahead. Everything was going to be shut down, and they'd pretty much have to deliver us our meals. Like there was a point where that fear. Of, I never thought that once. You didn't, bro. Go ahead. You're not the mob. The mob rules. You're not the mob. Eh? Hey, you're not the mob. Eh? Not making song, all you dude. can refuse. But my point is, the biggest fear is that we were going to be shut in. Well, what's the one thing you can't control at that point is how to clean your butt when you got to go. <laughs> like, it just makes total sense that toilet paper, it's, it doesn't go bad. It, it It's pretty compact. It fits. It's You'll use it eventually, even if you overbuy. I'm, I'm not agreeing with it, but I do see it. I don't know who started it. I'd love to get, there needs to be a grant on that. Probably Karen. Where the hell did this conversation go? <laughs> oh my god, it's a beautiful Freud. Thing. Yeah. Freud, lack of logic. Does the right. does the human Irrational subconscious over, yes. have horrible dark shit? Right. And did that horrible dark shit drive people to take too many teepees? I'll use a bad analogy. Oh great, here we go. But I used to play a lot of poker. And I was not a very aggressive player. And it always bothered me when a hyper-aggressive player or two would get on a table and sit with me. Because you don't really have a choice of who you're sitting with. Right. But that, the logic in me said that I can't play my game with this type of thing going on around me. I have to now adjust to something to counter that. And it was very frustrating for me because it took me out of my comfort zone. And that's how I would have perceived the toilet paper thing is like, my, the logic in me knows that this is illogical, but it's still happening regardless of whether I think it's logical or not. So I better get in on it. So I can even lo- make it logic a logical statement to become illogical. I would have come to the same conclusion. That's what's kind of weird about it, right? Like whether I was logical or illogical in that moment, I would have come to the same conclusion that I would have had to get a piece of it. Because... The last thing you want is have nothing. I mean, I, I I understand. Yeah, I I would have left. I want nothing to do with idiots. Well, I'm not talking about two people pulling on them like that. I'm just talking about like a line of people grabbing two or three. Yeah, I I, like I just envision the the TP area at at Costco, and I I don't even want to be in that section with bunch of idiots. dot com. Do you know why? <laughs> Go tell me. Because you want to be in the part where they give you the little samples. Yeah, it's no delicious. shit. Where's the sample section, bitches? May, at the end cap, please? May I, I want all samples? the end caps. I want all the samples. Yes, give them to me. Some Crispix? <laughs> Shout out to Crispix. The Reese's Kellogg Peanut better Rose. fucking pay us some money. Yeah. And Reese's. Uh, yeah, all the candies. Son of a bitch. Can we move anyway, along? Yes, please. Dear Jesus. But I agree. I I do get your anti-confrontationalism. I don't want. Is that anti-disestablishment? Both. It's not even about that. I just don't want to be around idiots. It's just that's but but that's my life. Um, I don't late, want to be around idiots. Too late, bro. There's about 330 million of us and no. 7.7 billion of us. No, there's 300 million there. in the country. 30 million, I would say, are not idiots. Okay. Move along. Uh, my note, maybe five. Five, not five million, <laughs> not, not, just no, five. Not 30 million either. Give me five. How do I, might, I find I those might five? Believe you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had a note. I, the uh, FDR started the New Deal to strengthen democracy. I don't care. No shit. I don't believe that is true. I believe that the New Deal was to establish a stronger government. Okay. Thinking that government's the answer, but it never should be. If that so, and I always, I always found that interesting. That so he got elected in whatever thirty two. I don't even know twenty eight. Roosevelt F- FDR. Yes, because remember he died in forty. Died in forty four. Right, and he was going to serve till forty six. Yeah. So he, in thirty two. So, but he, so from thirty two to forty one. I'm sorry, 48. Sure. So from 32 to 41, we were in the Depression, and the New Deal ran the whole time, and we never got out of the Depression. So he kept getting reelected, and yet we still weren't 
I mean, I've read that we started to come out of the depression, like in 40 and 41, kind of. Well, they stopped the bleeding. Right. But it was the war effort that really got us Correct. out. It was us starting to, in my opinion, supply Britain and Europe. Yes. Yes. With productivity. So his idea of the New Deal, yes, it, it, it gave jobs to some Americans because the road projects and the dam and those things That's like Hoover. that. That's Hoover. Hoover Dam. Well, they named it Hoover Dam, but it wasn't. It was under Hoover, wasn't it? No. It wasn't They under named Hoover. it after him, but it wasn't. It was under Roosevelt? Yes. I thought it was under Hoover. Negative. What year did Roosevelt start? 32? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It would have been under Roosevelt then. Yes. That So, the damn dam. Take as many pictures of the damn dam as you like. Damn dam. So, I just th- I've always thought that's interesting is that he did all these things for all these years, and we never got out of the Depression. Yet, he kept getting reelected. So, I would have thought that people would have kicked him out because it didn't do any fucking good. Well, 32, he's elected. 29 was a crash, so they needed a change, right? Yeah. But in 36, he gets reelected in a landslide, but we're still in the Depression. 36, yeah. Um, I 32 is when it was really bad. Yeah. So I don't know if it was worse after, his, after he got in. Right? I, yeah, like, I don't. Do you I don't know, know. Like, we're I talking relative, know. right? Like, I understand. What was the lowest point of the I have depression? no idea. Was it 33, probably? I sure. But say by 35, the bleeding just stopped. We're like, guys, we're just getting through this. One more, let's not go through too much change. I've got these other plans in place. People believed in a little longer process to get maybe a plan in place. Of course. And then the war happened. So, yeah. well, Hitler was also coming to power at this point. 33, yeah. 33. By 36. Had he not already, when did he get into Poland? 30, 39. Nine, right? But Olympics was 36. 36. Yes. In Berlin. So that was in Berlin. That's where you saw the rise of Hitler. And the you're fist, like, yeah. you're like, oh, fuck. Correct. Right? That's yes. where America probably was like, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, or did something's going to happen. Yeah. Of course. So, or they're just stupid, myopic people just told what to do, which is what we kind of always are. Okay. Also, <laughs> also Tamian, also Tamian, the, ta- the tambourines have made it all 37 tambourines. I also thought it was interesting that FDR started uh, the surveys of public opinion where uh, Mr. Gallup. Yes. Senior Edward Johnson, Richard Nicholas Gallup, senior. I think you're right. I have no idea. I think it's Edward. Uh, Eduardo Carroccio. Gallup Senior. Let's find out. Let's, let's go to the tape. I'm going to say that it was this guy. View. Edward. Edward Gallup started. No, George. Dude, fuck. Mr. Gallup. And Elmo Roper. Mr. Senior Gallup. Double G. Whatever it takes. George Gallup. Started, uh, Gallup started pulling, hence right. why the term Gallup pulling is now a thing. Jorge. Jorge Gallup. And, and Elmo Roper. Elmo. He's like, hey, take this pole, guys, and shove it up your ass. <laughs> so they tried to different pole. interview whoa, uh, a lot of Americans to try to connect them to the federal government so that they thought they were involved with the decision-making of the government. That's the point. That is the point. And the Gallup Bowl still exists? That is correct. Very interesting. Uh, 1936, um, businesses thought they were <laughs> losing, so to speak, so they started the National Association of Manufacturing because they, biz- they wanted government to get out of businesses' business. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you ever wonder why you what wonder? F- R- what? Ricky Schroeder's thumb, keep it down back the there. The point of it was that... What the fuck was that pause about? Was that a longer pause, or was that a short pause It felt long? The last part. It was like 1.8 milliseconds. It was really it quick. it felt like four hours. You were just being weird. <laughs> so the point Sorry. is that businesses in the mid-30s were trying to get their shit back together because the government was too involved with everything. Correct. So businesses tried to create an emotional attachment of Americans to their products. So they, they basically used Edward Bernays and the public relations industry. Um, they inserted their ideas into newspapers and then the government used films to fight back against this, which was 
looked like a joke from what I saw. It did look like a joke. Um, but GM was really good at that using... Oh, four inches longer. <laughs> oh. Yeah, when the car came out. This car looks longer this year. Four inches, ma'am. Like, oh my God, oh, 1936, you dirty bitch. It's like, that's, my, that's a total of my husband. <laughs> Man, some raunchy shit. It was dirty back then. They just It was all innuendo, bro. Uh, my last note, sir, was that the uh, 1936 New York World's Fair was entitled Democracy and the American Business. Democracy, bro. Since uh, Mr. Edward Bernays was the mastermind behind the whole thing. Yeah, link, the linking of democracy and capitalism was the, really the end of that, where it was the whole democracy. Yes, sir. And he uh, basically claimed that uh, the markets drove, or people drove the market, or the market drove the whatever, capitalism. It was all driven by capitalism. It was all consumer-driven. All that shit. It made sense. Made sense. And, you know, the thing was he controlled who who and what they looked at and what they wanted. So was it really free? In a way, no. It seemed like it wasn't. It's kind of weird, but anyway. He, he was almost controlling their thoughts in a way because you you were you you were purchasing things not because you needed them, but because you felt good about yourself when you bought them. Yes. And that to me, when I, when I, when I watched this, I thought to myself, that's actually the creation of a shopaholic because that, that's just, that's consumer. A, it's a drug like heroin or alcohol or sex or hair, you know, whatever your drug of choice is. Yeah. It's like you, when you go to the mall and you buy something, you feel good for a moment and then it's gone. It's fleeting. Right. Well, then you got to go buy something again. Yeah. And next thing you know, you're $20,000 in debt. Well, that term consumptionism that they came Absolutely. up with. Absolutely. And, and to your point, well, that's what's really funny about it. Because Freud talked about just suffering. But if you talk about Buddha, once again, linking connection to suffering. Yeah, yeah. So Bernays gets people to buy shit because he gets them to feel something for it. Now they buy it. Now they're attached to it. The attachment itself creates suffering and you need to do it over and over yeah, again. It's a cycle. It needs to be bigger next time. It needs to go from shoes to a purse, to a whole outfit, to a car, to house. a house, to a boat. You know, it has to grow. It, it won't ever be. It's never fulfilled. enough. It's a hole that will never be fulfilled. Correct. Because. What's the one thing that humans want? Everything. More. Sex bots. More. Okay. Like more. simply more because whatever you have, it is your innate nature to want more. Absolutely. And it can be more of anything. Absolutely. Be, I have all this free time. You know, some people are like, well, I don't put it in money, but it doesn't have to be money. Sense. It's some resource. It's time. Fame, popularity, yeah, money, yeah. It could be jewels. It could be more likes. food. It could be all of it, right? Yeah. But the one thing humans, oh, this is why giving things to people doesn't solve the problem because once it's given, it's like the hierarchy, the Maslow's hierarchy, right? Same thing, Maslow's hierarchy. Once you have these certain innate things covered, you start going to the next subcategory of comfort. So now we're at comfort. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the next subcategory of, oh, well, what's even below that? What's and you just keep get you keep drilling down. You will always want more. Yeah. And they they really plugged into that. It took me a long time to figure out that material things don't make me happy. It took me a long, long time. Law. It's recent for me. Five years tops. No, not even five years probably. In uh, 1993, Ducati came out with my favorite motorcycle, the 916. And I had that beautiful I picture. That. It, re it revolutionized the motorcycle industry. The pipes were tucked underneath the back, the back seat. It, it was magnificent. They redesigned it a few times. And then finally in 05, I got the 998. It looked basically the same, bigger engine. And it was, she's, she was magnificent. Just, just beautiful. She turned on a dime, tons of horsepower, 
And then I got home and I was like, oh, didn't make, you know, I spent $11,000 on a bike and uh, didn't make me happy. <laughs> yeah. It, but, you know, I waited for that bike for 12 years. Yeah. 12 years. Three, 12 years. 12 years. But, I, you know, it took me 12 years of wanting this Ducati. And then, oh, shit. <laughs> kind of sucks. But I, you know, learned my lesson, right? What year was that again? Oh five. Uh, we know we were feeling different things back then. Well, yeah, but it, at least I learned it somewhat. No, you learned the I connection. Mean, yeah, which is huge. But that's not usually the problem. The problem is getting out of the loop. True. Like, you know, the first step to recovery is recognizing the problem. Yeah, right? that, like, that's when I figured it out. You and I having right. You and I having suicidal ideations. Well, that's not good either. Isn't good. No oh, shit. But recognizing that we have them is a start. And then we go, okay, well, how do we just at least stop thinking that? Now of we course. get better. But some people don't take that for a second step. They just go, I know I constantly have this thought in my head and I'm just fighting it all day. That's really where Freud, I feel like Freud was. Like, we are one, we are one bad nap or one bad sleep away from destruction, complete, complete irrationality. Like, all you need is that little, what's that little hiccup in thought, that little, man, I need that extra half hour of sleep because I'm a little tired and I'm not fighting this urge anymore. I, yeah, I'll pick, I'll, I'll punch today instead of, I'll hit you with my car instead of let you in. I mean, he's not incorrect per se. It doesn't mean he's right, but he's not, he's definitely not wrong because we've seen this in humanity. We've seen it. It makes me very sad. Right, I really but, want to believe them. I really want to believe the best in people. And that's why we're doing this. Cause you and I do believe the best in people. We want, we want justice and we want people to feel like they're connected to, to weirdos like you and I, man. And do we just need a couple more people here and there to, to listen and grow? And that's how, that's what we do, bro. Anything else on Mr. Bernays? Uh, I have one final comment, but I'll wait till you're done. No, I just had uh, engineering of consent was the big, the big kind of term towards the end of the, the first part, but it is the title of the second part. So we'll probably watch that and then and discuss that. But yes, the sir. engineering of consent, like he got he got to manufacture you to agree. That's it's what that is. Like disturbing. That's absolute control. He manufactured. Your agreement to him, with him, or whatever. That's just the term alone sounds sounds slimy. Uh, yeah. So, that's all I got. What you got? What My you got final thought is, I thought it, uh, it was ironic, or whatever word you want to use, that the show is called Century of the Self. And what does everyone do now? Take selfies. Ta-da! I knew you were going to connect that. So, this... Gun jumper. <laughs> <laughs> so this, I you know, this century of self, the thing was released 18 years ago. Yeah. The term selfie, I don't know when that not, came out. It was not Well, this, the iPhone came out in whatever, 05 or something. So Yeah, this is 2002, um, bro. Right. So in 02, no. this, this, this show came out on BBC. Maybe had a camera. Maybe. Hardly. But it... No one took pictures yet. Nobody and took pictures of themselves. Not like that. No. There, was, there was no smart information yet. like, hey, pick up this milk from the fucking store. So it was, a, it, I mean, there may have been a camera. It but, was, maybe. But the term selfie had not come out Correct. yet. Correct. But it's, I find it very, <sighs> ironic's not the right word, but the fact that the show was called this and how consumerism was created and how emotion is attached to... <sighs> Okay, go ahead. September 2002 is when the term selfie was coined. Now we have to look at when BBC put out Century of Self. But that's what's funny, to your point, but keep keep going because Australian I man invented up. the selfie after a drunken night out. Fuck that guy. You drunk fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hello to the world. This drunk Australian fuck started selfies. And we talk about this because we talk about the century self now that you brought it up. You just opened that Pandora's box. I'm sorry. Your You're welcome. Something popped. Bo- both of them. Yeah, that was my shoulder. Oh, that, I thought it was your back. Uh, 
It's spinal. My back is definitely spinal. I can feel my toes. I'm okay. Okay, good. Well, so finish your thought about the selfie in the century. I just think it's incredibly that in a hundred years ago, this guy started steering people towards buying things and doing things to increase the, 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 the money in the pockets of the rich Basically, that's the very short version, right? So, and that's never changed. You mean we talked about and the irony of the fact that you mentioned, oh, hey, let's buy more cell phones every fucking six months that have a reverse camera to take a selfie. That's absurd. And not only, like, it's better than any fucking camera <laughs> ever. <laughs> you never have. 4K in They're your hand. Fucking amazing. You said it on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. Did we? You said 4K in the palm of your hand. It's unbelievable. I mean, like the quality. It's unbelievable. So uh, I looked up Century of Self. Yeah. March through April of 2002. So six months six prior. Months. To, so they should get credit. They should get credit. Now, yeah. what's what's interesting, though, is they talk about Century of the Self. However, Bernays only looked at what drives individuals in groups. Yes. So really, as we watch this show, because it does change, right? The philosophies change. They don't, they move away from Bernays to someone else and they go back and they go back and then they go back again. They go back on going back. Yeah. So there's a lot of changes that we'll talk about, but at this point we've got this one thought, but now going forward, it would have been the mob mentality. Like, it's so individualized now again. So I, it's weird how it, but when he saw them as a group, when you look at selfies, a lot of times it's not just one person, right? It's a lot. It's a group of 22 year old girls in Scottsdale and there's five of them at a bar, but they have to be in it. Oh, of course. Part of it. Oh yeah. That's that's the point. Like the one, I think we talked about on the previous, who was the gentleman who was in orbit around the moon? Wow. Yeah. 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 Right, so the, he took a picture. John of John Orbiter. <laughs> That's right. Because I don't know his Mr. name. Orbiter. Oh, Wasn't that the day shit. we fucking said? I don't know his name, so his name's yeah, John, John Orbiter. Or, uh, Johnny Quest. Maybe it's Raj. Yes. No. 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 <sighs> Cooper Polly. Doctor Sheldon Cooper. I was going to say Cooper Polly. Rajesh Cooper Polly. Do you remember? Do you ever watch that? Yeah. Big Bang Theory. Do you yeah. remember the, was it the first or second one where like, he's like, yeah, you can tell your phone to call somebody. He's like, call Leonard Hofstetter and it rings his phone. And he goes, call Raj. But I guess calling and they keep getting it wrong. He goes, let me try it. Crawl flippity floppity flop. And he's like calling Raj <laughs> Kutra Polly. It is like even distinguished racist or something. I forget. It's really fucking. Such a I don't recall movie. that scene, but what a crazy sure. Show. That was a, sh- I- anyway, uh, it's super tame. Howard! Howard! Put on a uh, Howard! I gotta go to the store, ma! And his Nicholas Cage. Phenomenal. I've not seen his Nicholas Cage. Howard's Nicholas Cage. Yours is fantastic. Mm, I'm more like Treasure Protector. It, your Nicholas Cage is. It's not like Dreyfus. Your Nicholas Cage is right underneath your check mark. Oh, my check mark is good. Yes. My check mark is Duh. probably best. Probably a best impression because it's not really trying to sound like exactly someone, just it's in general. Check mark. Yeah, it sounds like check mark. Yeah. Not, not like I'm not trying to sound like Mr. Hanks or Mr. Uh, Rita. Mr. Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> My Rita impression, delicious. <laughs> um, anyway, so. When yeah, check so mark says delicious, itself. it's so funny. So John Orbiter check mark. is around the check moon. Check mark. Check mark. How was that b- turkey burger last week? It was delicious. <laughs> It's on page three, and the menu only had two pages. On fuck zips. It's on the third menu, please. Where is this thing? Where is this burger of turkey? I don't understand. Anyway, John Orbiter, go. Yeah, John Orbiter's like, boom. They take a picture of the Earth, and it's like, this is the picture of everyone in every human save three. Yeah. And in today's fucking shuttle, that shit would have been save two, because that motherfucker would have been in that shot. And yep. You know he would have been like... Hey, bitches. Holding his arm out with his little fucking selfie stick. He's like, he's like, can he even carry that extra weight on the shuttle? No. I probably couldn't have. It would have been a paperclip. He would have had to hold his arm out. Yeah. A little duct tape, a little MacGyver action. Yeah. But, yeah, it's totally true. And it's crazy to think that was only 50 years ago. Yeah. 
50. And in 50 years, we went from I want to be an observer of the world to be I want to be part of the observation of the world. Yeah. I want to be part of how others observe the world. Like I, I'm important. Mm -hmm. I'm important in this. Yeah. It's an interesting thought, man. We've got like two more of these to do and we're like over two hours. This is what always happens, dude. I know. Hey dude, let's do seven podcasts tomorrow. Yeah, sure. We're going to do two. We're going to do a half of one. Team dipshit. Okay. Part two of this is tomorrow. That'll be 14 hours. Yeah. (laughs) Well, what That's do we have? Any, have any finishing thoughts? No, sir. Okay, Wrap what, it was up. Your, what was your final thought on, on this? On the thing? selfie. I love that thought about I mean, the thought about it is very true. The thought that you knew I was going to have the thought is disturbing. Well, I, I kind of got you pinned a little bit. I could probably Bernays you a little bit if I wanted to. Fuck that. I got to go. I know it You knew I wasn't going to. You knew on the TP day I wasn't going to go to. It was like, there's no fucking way he's going to the store that day. Well, I didn't even know. I'm just saying if I was there when the rush happened, because I. You, somebody had to started the rush, so it didn't just Karen. exist. It wasn't like ready, set, go, like rush. Yeah, it, it, someone started it, and then it blew up, right? So if I were happened to be there as the commotion was happening, I'd probably been like, maybe I'll sneak off me a pallet. Probably, yeah. I'd, I'd be a greedy bitch. I bought like twenty two Folgers is 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 on sale. Oh my god! Well, the thing is, I go through one a month. I didn't buy 22 of them. I, I was bought, like, you have two years of coffee? I bought 10 of them. But they're good for like five years. Dude, they're vacuum sealed and shit. They're good for like ever. But my point is, it'll be gone in less than a year. And I saved a lot on each one. So why not have a year's worth of coffee and not worry about it? How do you even have room in the kitchen? There's not much room in the kitchen anymore. Because I've got <laughs> Folgers cans all over the place. You have like a package of crackers, a can of tuna, and, and coffee. That's 400 it. pallets of coffee. coffee. I don't know, bro. Hoarder. Thank thank Ricky Schroeder for them. Yep. <laughs> that was an excellent point. That's right. He's brilliant. And on that note, Dr. Ricky Schroeder's Dr. thumb. Dr. Ricky Schroeder. We'll have to have the whole explanation of that. I know we kind of talked we did. about it. I think we did. So hopefully he throws it up the listen. elevator shaft. Yeah, catch man to Ben. What's catch his name? Blue Diamond Phillips slash uh, slash Edward James Olmos slash uh, who's th- Jimmy Smith's the other guy? Benjamin Benjamin, not Button. It's not Browder, by the way. Gosh darn it! Please don't hurt me. But anyway, I'm not gonna. So hurt we're gonna, we're gonna you? close it. We got how many more of these? Are we doing today? Sixteen. Three. Three more. All right. Well, thanks so much for listening, guys. Thanks, y'all. This has been another Knocked Conscious. We talked about the first part or part one of the century of self, and it was called Happiness Machines. That was what it was titled. That's what we we'll, are. We'll put the link on YouTube or, or the YouTube link at the er, in the show notes. Is that yes, right? sir. Am that's I just correct. Babbling or no? What, on the on? iTunes notes, you'll see the YouTube link to Century of the Self. Ding. Go team check mark. Ding. Go check mark. <laughs> hey guys, thanks so much for listening in. We're going to so record a couple more of these. Have a great uh, day. Make sure you go to knockedconscious.com. Check us out uh, at KnockedCon on Twitter. Thanks so much, guys. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.